If you're financially smart enough to play Popper instead of other formats, your money may not be sure what to do with itself. At Augur Financial, we'll help it save for the future, combining careful study with our new ThoughtCast app. Augur Financial, learning from the tragic lessons of other formats. What are you doing out in the middle of nowhere? Well, I had to be at that there crossroads last midnight. Sell my soul to the devil. Well, ain't it a small world, spiritually speaking? Pete and Delmer just been baptized and saved. I guess I'm the only one that remains unaffiliated. Hello and welcome to hopefully what will not be a janktastic Saturday. <laughs> uh, apologies for last week. I was watching the feedback and it was a lot of fun and the banter with my son and I was cool and all. But um, really, really wish I could have uh, tweaked that camera a little bit better, worked on the focus and stuff. I just uh, started the show. I, I thought everything was there and I when I watched it back. I was like, eh, stuff was a little hard to read. So apologies for that. Uh, like I said, we're only going to do that once in a while. Same with this list. This is uh, probably... Our most requested deck a um, long time ago, I got a 5-0 with this and it made some waves. And ever since then, it's just been my pet project. It is not a serious deck. I learned that the hard way of Little Fight. I had to uh, disclose to him. I was like, I think this is really ready because I was just slamming people with this thing. And I took it to a league and I did a personal worst. I've And on the show, when uh, we compete on tournaments, uh, I, used, I think I had two 5 outings. But there's always a few wins in there, here and there. But that had only happened twice. Well, now I've got a third, and it's the worst ever. I lost every single game. It wasn't this version, but it was pretty close. But I lost every single match 0-2, 0-2, 0-2, 0-2. And it really hurt and stung. But I'm pressing on because this thing, it does win a lot, but it's very finicky. Anyway, let me catch up with the chat. <laughs> Little fight, Paladin 19, Liquid Zavago, and uh, yeah, yeah, Shirazamon in the house. Thank you all for joining me. So yeah, so anyway, this is uh, my little baby. You're going to think the lands are a little bit high, but if you think about it, these are meant to act as unearthed. So let's subtract three right there. So we're at 20 lands, and then we're going to go down to about 16 because we want to cycle these the majority of the time. Do not underestimate land drops in this list. Um, we top out at three mana with this beast of a card, and the main reason we're playing him is because of solid footing. But um, if you have a hand like uh, step, plane, plane, and you have a priest in your hand, and you're on the draw and you don't draw land, I would actually probably think the right play is usually to play the step, but we'll see. Anyway, um, all right, played magic in the house <laughs> on for on time for once. All right, good to see you. Anyway, enough about that and that stuff. We will go over the list. The rest are just basic lands. Uh, we've got one longbow main for the Tron locks. Uh, kind of no other way around that. Uh, we got solid footing, which is really good in a pinch. Uh, obviously, it's the kill card with uh, Priest of Norn. It turns that into a two-swing victory condition. We've got uh, one, two, three Sentinel's Eyes. We've got four Ethereal Armors, four Bodyguards, three Angelic Renewals, four Benevolent Blessings. Whole reason I'm showing this today is this is the big change, right? Um, Benevolent Blessing, it's so cool. In the old days, we'd have to fight around Chalmano and our stuff falling off if we were going up against a white deck and whatnot. But a uh, really, really amazing uh, upgrade for this list. And that's why I was confident enough to spend 10 ticks and go blow it in a uh, league, which is something I don't regularly do anymore. Um, anyway, we've got four Lost Leonin and uh, two Orum's Cure. I'll hold on this card because a lot of people don't know about this gem. If you control the planes, you can tap an untapped creature rather than pay its cost. I always like that, rather than, right? It's a good thing to search for when you're looking for a, a tech. Prevent the next four damage that would be dealt to any target. Click very slowly with this, because uh, you have to tap the creature, and then sometimes you didn't want that creature to be saved, and you can it can get you into trouble. Ha! Anyway, um, yes, Benevolent Blessing. And then we've got four Icar Clomers and four Priests of Norm. In the sideboard, two Hollow, two Light of Hope. Super flexible in finding I like this, uh, mostly for Journey to Nowheres. Uh, if we're going up against something that isn't trying to just zap our stuff. Um, COP Black's in here because 
<clears throat> sometimes they can hold your creatures at bay long enough and you get nibbled to death and so I just needed more time. Same with COP red. We got two more cures in here, four red and such, uh, three macabs. Not too worried about graveyard interaction because we have access to two bows, one in the side and one in the yard, and then uh, three gut shots. I'm always tempted to bring this up to four, watch we'll play Faye all day and, and wish we did. But um, anyway, yeah, yeah, this light of hope, it, it's uh, cutesy, but boy, does it. It comes, it's very nice. It's, uh, I've just been finding I really like playing it. Hey, uh, Draylon13, good to see you. Cheers. Hmm. So without further ado, we'll take what's hopefully going to be awesome, but maybe it'll turn into a hot pile. We'll, we'll decide that as we go along here. This is just the most finicky deck I've ever made. Um, I can't, you, you'll see it today. I'm, I'm positive it, it will just, uh, oops, look at this. Cancel that. That's just not the right deck. I don't know why I have the thing loaded in deck editor and it's like do this submit all right here we go let's see what we can do folks and we'll get the little bouncy screen out of the way here we go we'll move this over here and poop there we go hey ready all righty so anyway uh yeah we got I'm going to be replaying the uh call time previews and some of the uh things because you know that's fresh on the list we'll go over that list as well so that's going to be pretty cool Let's see what we're up against. Edzilla. That's a pretty interesting name. I don't think I've ever uh, played them before. Ah, I've never seen this uh, hold off at zero before. Oh, not a bummer. No wonder. Okay. Let's try this again. And we will create. Hey, we're already 1-0. Just kidding. I won't count that. Oh, come on, Edzilla. Are you going to play or not? What's going on? Glad to catch you live. He who dared. Nice to see you and thank you for chiming in. I don't know about this uh, Edzilla person. Let's go. Uh, yeah, we want to play first. Let's kill the uh, chat. Boink. Three lands. This is all right. I'll keep it. Boop. We've got protection. This deck's all about protection. So playing Infect. Is there a list? There will be. My son wants to build it while we watch. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, if you scroll up in the uh, show or if uh, Little Fighter Shiraz might be able to go back and, and copy paste the uh, list. I still got to get that darn deck list feature thing to work. Um, I've been looking into it and it. It ain't so easy. There it is. Thank you for Shiraz. Appreciate that. I wish there was a way to delineate the uh, sideboard from the main deck. A lot of times uh, things kind of run together. So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Thank you, Shiraz. He is on it. Hmm. All right. Okay, here we go. We're up against it already with black, black and red. That's what it's all about, folks. Well, we at least get a uh, one turn of favoritism, right? We'll really confuse him, and we'll attack with the bodyguard. That'll teach him. Dun, dun, dun. No, this deck, uh, is, as much as I badmouthed it earlier, um, I'm, I'm not joking when I say, like, I've I've gone on 20, uh, 20 game runs where it, it wins all 20. It, it's just, there's some, it can really, really shut the, well, it's just like uh, heroic or even more so like uh, uh, hexproof can just sometimes you just own the match it's just you can't do anything it's gaining a ton of life doing everything so um so we're up against super removal here not quite sure what we should call uh being that uh they have both removal colors that's a beautiful mountain my goodness i don't think i've ever heard my pc get this loud all righty well i want to wait maybe a little bit longer on this but i also want to be able to surprise him if he blocks there but right now, I'm going to cycle this before my attack phase. All right. And I'll attack with this. And hopefully, he blocks. All right. Because that's a big problem card. So it's a nice little combat trick in a pinch. I mean, obviously, you want to use it on your uh, priest. But maybe we don't. Oh, sorry about that. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, check that out. My Chase Stone, I think is his name. That looks like something out of uh, Inception. Wow. You know, every time I, I think, oh, I'm going to go all in on this land. I'm going to get like 30 of them. And that's going to be my land from now on. And then I, I get kind of tired of it and I'm just I move on and such. I don't really want to uh, consider. Oh, okay. Well, this is going to be really fun here. We'll do this to this. Now, what should we do, boys and girls? I think we should call red. I think we should call red. Let's do this to this. <sighs> so he can't block, and um, let's go nice and slow. 
And we're coming on over for six. He's got one more turn after this. We're protected from half his deck that we know of so far. Hey, all right. Boy, oh boy. I think my computer or CPU is doing jumping jacks here. All righty. And we go to the sideboard. We didn't see too much, but we know they're going to be doing a lot of little stuff. But we're not going to need the longbow. And uh, I'll get rid of a Sentinel's Eyes. We've got black and red here, but I want to stay on the aggro side of things. Try to only bring in COP red for um, the burn matchups and such. Hmm. Hollow would be pretty interesting call. I uh, don't think we're going to need this. I don't know. Let's say, um, let's bring in um, one more cure and a hollow. Let's just try that. Boop. There we go. Game one. That was a, uh, I'll call it Rakdos. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's a win. Two, three, four, about up. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. Okay, okay, here we go. Let's see if we can pull this one off. Alrighty. Well, we've got a creature. We don't have much else, though. But as finicky as this deck is, and I'm on the draw, and my lands are okay. I'm going to keep this. Getting real superstitious with this deck. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Here we go at the top of the show. A lot of football on today. I think the, there's a free UFC fight on uh, the networks out here in America anyway. I think it's on ABC for once. Uh, uh, Max Holloway and Qatar, Cater. Actually, I remember last time I saw Cater fight, I was just like, wow, that guy looks like a... Well, okay, we got, we got the goods now. That guy looked like a world beater. I was... Um, I know Holloway's the man, but feels like his... You know, he's hitting that kind of, uh, I don't know, age slump where it definitely he's plateauing a bit. I think when he fought, um, that was my favorite dude right here locally. Um, ah, who was he? Who was he? Who was he? This jujitsu specialist said he just mangled and they had to stop the fight. That was the only time he had lost, though. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to put this out just as bait. Maybe cost him a turn. We all know what the real plan is. Priest of Norn outside of a fire blast or maybe an edict effect. Go from there. We still haven't really seen any of the firepower. He blocked the first alchemist and then uh, he was dead. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with here. I predict the Murr is going to the graveyard very soon. Let's see if I'm right. I am. Okay, down he goes. Uh, no. <laughs> Am I the only one that wishes the old artifact colors would come back? When you play a deck with artifacts and the newer white cards, it just... Uh, I don't know what was wrong with that old look. It was so cool. <clears throat> Feeling very uh, reckless here because we've got another priest and we've got hollow and solid footing right behind it. So outside of an edict effect, I'm feeling pretty good here. If, if this lives, we'll see. He's probably just like, what on earth am I losing to? I think I wrote that the other night. <clears throat> when I was playing, I don't know, one of my like 10, 12 game runs with this thing, I was like, uh, I put in the text or something. It was something on the lines of, uh, uh, I'm playing a deck you'll think is weird, but most likely it will beat you or something like that. And it proved correct all night. All right. Carnarium. I don't like seeing that. Good news is if he doesn't kill this priest, we'll have edict food in the other one and we'll be able to attack and probably kill that alchemist in one go. Might be the cost of... Paper cards being the Great Tome versus Brown. Yeah. I doubt it with a company that that size and stuff. This hand just keeps getting better. Uh, we're going to drop this right out of the blue here. I'll attack with this. Remember, Solid Footing has Flash, ladies and germs. If he wants to block this, it's going to cost him. Okay. If he doesn't want to block it, it's going to cost him. Now it's a 1-5. I'm so glad... Right out of the gates, the deck's working. This is usually what it does, except when I pay for a tournament, which has only been like once. Actually, I think this is one and one. 
I went 5.0 with it, and then I went 0.5 with it. But very different versions. I used to run, um, what was it? Uh, boy, that's a pretty, but you know what? That bolt, that artwork's pretty, but the design of the actual card is just too gummy. It just needs to be a full frame right there. It's beautiful, but it's just mired in the, uh, the framework. Um, oh, Fleet Feather Sandals, a 2-2 haste that gains flyer, flying for two to equip. There's a kite sail, gives uh, two to equip, two to cost, and plus one and gains flying. But the the newer one, the kite uh, Cliffhaven kite sail, costs one and it, if you have a creature out, it just makes it have flying. That's probably the best option. But I had one in my sideboard for a while and I was like, well, what am I bringing this in against? Uh, you know, the best evasion outside of flying is protection as we're seeing here, or we might see. And um, yeah, just able to uh, keep things alive and, you know, sometimes they all have a flyer and stuff. And I wouldn't want to bring it in against Fey and such. So, darn, I'm low on Orm's cure. Oh, <laughs> yeah, most people are. Most people don't even have them. Alrighty, let's see what we can do here. Well, you will cycle. Don't want to underestimate this list here. Oh, boy. Okay, now the deck's kind of acting like a jerk. But um, I think we can just win here if uh, he doesn't want to block. I'll just divvy up our threats here. And attack. One of the cooler things, too, like against Stompy and such, wither damage is so misunderstood. People block all the time, and they don't remember that it's wither damage when you block an infect creature. It will stick around. Your stuff's really dead. Um, and there's a lot of combat math that goes wrong. Um, I did run Prismatic Strands for a while. Obviously, it's awesome with Vigilant Creatures, right? you think it would be a perfect fit. I just kept wanting to lower that curve and, and try to stay a little bit on the, uh, the aggro side of things. And uh, it was uh, stretching games a little too long in some cases. All right. Is he afraid of the tricks? Is he going to double block and lose them both? He's going to be dead if he does that. I think he forgot that Solid Footing does that. Unless he's got some crazy... Uh, he doesn't have a swamp, so he can't have snuff out. Uh, okay, he's just dead here. All right? Yep, all right. Well, that's a nice way to start the day, a WW. Sounds like the beginning of a website. Okay. Well, that monkey's off my back. I was kind of afraid I was going to repeat what I had done with um, with the uh, previous events. Uh, I want to go over this list real quick. Not this list. Uh, the new cards coming up. I, I tend to use this Scryfall site. It seems to be one of the more up-to-date. Um, you can see they've just updated as of just a little while ago. Um, there's some pretty cool cards. This uh, Battlefield Raptors worth mentioning. Uh, one mana for a 1-2 flying first strike. That's going to give Faye some headaches. I, You know, I think... Um, Shiraz or Little Fight, if you could bring up Airborne Aid, the Born has an E at the end of it. Um, I don't think this card will start being played, but you're going to see it a little bit in casual because there's definitely a bird theme that's coming through with this, and uh, they make them of this quality. There might be something there. Appreciate that, my friend. Um, yeah, yeah. Well played, says Darlin. Thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a few cards to look over if you want to uh, check out this uh, Scryfall uh, site. And, um, hmm. Sometimes it shows my language skills how lacking they are. There's this is an interesting one. Archaeo form, Ar arachnoform. That's what it is. Two two and gains reach and is every creature type. That's a lot of card. I don't see where it fits. I don't know what I would put it in, but um, yeah, I do remember another bird deck. You're right, right. Um, just to have a proxy for today. There you go. Um, so anyway, uh, as we scroll through here, a lot of stuff in languages I don't understand because I'm pretty lame when it comes to that stuff of uh, but there's uh there's a few things now boast is an interesting mechanic in that um i in classic deluxe form misread it i thought you could just pay one when a creature attacks unfortunately uh big note to self uh, and i haven't come out yet so i haven't screwed up yet but they all say activate this ability only if this creature attacked this turn. So there was a new black creature that I was kind of excited about. I thought it might fit into my black burn deck. And uh, then I was like, well, I'm not going to attack with that. It's just a you know puny little one. one. I thought you could go in with an evasion creature and trigger the boast off of another card. Maybe that'll be a thing. But for right now, it doesn't seem to be. Um, 
So yeah, we've got a nice little two for one there, but they're awfully fragile in the two two one. Got some reprints, uh, strategic planning, blah 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 blah. Let me see. Uh, yeah, Fortel's I think a reprint, or there's something that does does Fortel anyway. But blue gets a little more evasion, but nobody's going to be playing that. This is just neat. Now I'll say this: the artwork's just fascinating on this set, and also the uh, flavor text is is holding in there. It's there's. There's some stinkers, but there's mostly winners I've been noticing. This is uh, Wings of the Cosmos. Talk about a deck that might make it in a white infect. I wouldn't put it in. But so there's – sorry, I'm so scatterbrained. I had too much caffeine. There's two ways of building white infect I've noticed. Um, you might want to try Tethmos High Priest. Uh, if you bring that up, Shiraz or Little Fighter, I'd appreciate it. Um, Tethmos is neat, but you need instants and you need sorceries. So if you go that route, I would very much consider playing Wings of the Cosmos. I like the – the sh surprise factor and the inevitability of the enchantment model because it just sticks around and there are not many people playing mass enchantment removal and <laughs> they usually need it right then and there if uh, your deck's working and such so I'm not quite sure what Prisa means is that haste anybody anyone <laughs> uh, oh yeah this was the card I thought might be like I was like oh cool one two and, uh, you know, it's funny. Everything's evolved out of Electricery range, or it seems like that's where the design's going. And then, you know, they go and give us a cannonade. But, um, so, yeah, I thought I thought that was a nice little life tick-tock clock. And it isn't. I mean, it is, but they have to have, like, no creatures out to do that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, and then this is a nice little upgrade, the uh, Jaspera Sentinel, Sentinel with Reach and uh, kind of acts like the wall creatures do a little bit there. Tap and untap creature you control at one minute. <clears throat> yes, it's haste. Oh, thank you, Paladin 19. Yeah, see? Play magic, boys and girls, and you you can deduce what other languages are. You don't even need to go to school. Scratch that. All right, so anyway, we've got uh, just some really cool design. I mean, look at these borders. They're just gorgeous. I love this stuff. Anyway, we'll just, I'll go through this. Man, you talk about some beef. <laughs> <laughs> it's what's for dinner the giant ox oh speaking of uh, we've got a new commercial uh thanks to terry core the second uh he out of the blue one night messaged me a really funny little take on bottle bottle gnomes if you can bring that up sure i sorry i'm you're like johnny on the spot today i'm i'm making you do some jump roping with the digital persuasion anyway um so yeah, it's uh, bottle nose bourbon. So I know, like we need another uh, alcohol thing, but they're so easy. It's just like metal bands, right? They just kind of, everything seems to fit with either uh, some sort of elixir or uh, a metal band or, or things like that. It's, uh, yeah, Raven Form's gonna be interesting. Now this Wither Crown is just weird. I would love, I like the artwork, but um, it's so weird. It says, Enchanted Creature has a base power zero. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life unless you sacrifice it. It's just strange. Um, but I like Strange. I like that they're still taking chances. This is pretty interesting little card. A 2-2 two, two for 2 that grants the haste. That's not going to see play, but it's interesting. I kind of like it. Um, mm -hmm. And when I say not going to see play, I mean tournament-wise. Everybody's going to try. This card's just confusing. Um, I I really like it, but I can't think of one deck I would put it in. Um, I love those commercials. Nice. Yeah, and then, um, oh, man, you talk about <laughs> one of the best quotes. Listen to this. The masks float downstream toward Mirror Lake, where the faces arise to wear them. <laughs> that is some creepy stuff. And you all know me. It's got a mask. It's creepy. I'm all in. I just wish this was a little blacker. Um, let's see. And then, oh, this is interesting. Dogged Pursuit I really like, too. Again, I don't know. But you give enough, I call it the clock effects, just every upkeep, every upkeep. I love those kind of decks where you just set and forget, like uh, Ill-Gotten Inheritance and, and Dogged Pursuit and and uh, the the. Uh, not the the curse of uh da, da, da. what's the black curse the two mana and you start uh i crashed and burned with that uh, iteration of that recently too um anyway so yeah we've got um as we go through an old nice little uh upgrade on the uh, art there that's pretty sweet looking and then we uh roll down here and this stuff's all pretty old news because you know unless uh we've been sleeping on you know in the gorgeous reprints of the art here we've got um Village Rights gets a nice little thing here. I, I, I like this quote, too. <clears throat> the skelly raised scorn poles in conquered villages, cursed totems of wood and bone that sap survivors of physical strength and the will to fight back. <laughs> it's like, all right, they're getting it. They're getting it back. I, mean, I got faith in the uh, flavor text again. So anyway, so, yeah, just some absolutely gorgeous art. The little snowboarders that I was talking about last week. And then, uh, yeah, we've got um, Behold the Multiverse, little Neil deGrasse Tyson car. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, where is, yeah, Frostbite, I mentioned that. I don't think that's going to 
do much along the lines of those things. But and then these little like double look cards. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, enough of that stuff. All right, let's go off and play play a game here. Let's play this guy. Woohoo! Trespasser's Curse. That's what it is. I forget nothing. Wah! All right. Oh, and a uh, personal update. Uh, Aaron, also known as uh, Sapphire, to all of you from last week's live show, finally got his hair cut. He looks so handsome. All right. Mulligan. All right. We've got the goods. And we got the lands. And we'll keep. Keep it. Now, it's unlikely that this is going to be needing saving from damage. So I'm going... Remember what I warned you guys about. This deck's real finicky. So I'm going to drop the step and I'm going to lose the cure because I want to play this done as that. What's really cool with Angelic Renewal, if you can bring that up in the chat, I'd appreciate it, um, is that you can trip the bodyguard, trigger the Angelic Renewal, bring it back, and then give it another... So you get double bodyguard effect out of it. I did run four of them, but I wanted to uh, fit the uh, Orms Cure in main... So uh, if you don't have those, whoever's building the deck, I'm sorry, I forgot who it was in the chat. Um, just add another Angelic Renewal and probably a fourth um, Escape Vigilance thingy, whatever the eyes of something. You know me. Ooh. All right. Here we go. And I think this card frame I'm inside of is the Priest of Persistence, which goes to show how we play this deck about twice a year. And uh, for good reason. Well, we see we see that. I'm more worried about Journey at this point, so I'm going to change the plan. I'm going to bring this out as just kind of bait. Let's see where he's at. I've been wanting to do some sort of Rakdos Curse deck for a while. Might be viable soon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Played Magic. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Very cool. What's your son's name or your girl? Or I, I didn't catch who's a what's a... Me happy to give him a little shout out. And speaking of shout outs, uh, we have a very un um, popper plug. Uh, one of the little fights buddies has a very cool retro gaming channel. Uh, if you like that sort of thing, uh, go give him some love. He'll put up the link here shortly. It's pretty pretty cool stuff. Alrighty, let's see. Pietro. Ooh, that's a cool sounding name. All right. Well, greetings to you, and thank you for watching and such. Hey, morning, says Ken Barb. Well, let's see. Uh, do, do we fight with the journey? I kind of want to hold off on that just a little bit. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow roll this. I want to get... I, I really want this to pay off, so we're going to slow roll this. This isn't your typical, in fact, where you just, what? And you just, you know, run over across the table and you, and you smash things. This is all about chilling out and uh waiting for that you know trump turn where you just do, 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 and you just you just smash not like the president um just meaning the verb thank you mm -hmm. all right well we're gonna attack here we don't mind nothing with this thicker claw there he is drilling 13 all right in the chat so i heard there was a Little tiny ban and popper. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I got so much to talk about in this show. Yes, uh, it's nice to nice to see fall from favor gone. And and it was only a popper. Um, what do you call a uh, smackdown? Usually it's like you know constructed modern and all these things and stuff. And it was just that, and it was awesome. And um, yeah, but it. In the same breath, they said, we know that Tron's still a problem and we're looking into it. But for right now, it's like, gosh, you just think that there was like uh, like some bureaucrats paying off wizards for, you know, Tron money off to the side or some, you know, nefarious sort of backstreet dealings or something. It's like, what is the deal, man? It's like, can it? I mean, it's been years. <laughs> it's been years. I, I, I used to play like three tournaments a week and now I play like three a year crazy what's up long time no see why do i need such a long name is back that's right <laughs> good to see you man that's right oh my gosh how did i miss that very cool to have you back my friend good to see you and we're playing you come back after all this time and it's probably feels like other than a few key cards like solid footing and benevolent blessing it's like oh gosh he's playing this again it's like this is probably up there with uh ug death touch like as far as requests go we try to hit it about twice a year so um I figure Benevolent Blessing's kind of newish, so might as well show it off. Fits like a dream in this deck list. I mean, Chow Man O Who? 
I don't remember. And there are some times, too, in that uh, fin graph, you know, thank goodness. It, it, I used to wish it was a plane sometimes, and now it's like, yeah, I don't care. All right. So now we've got uh, Oblivion Ring or Journey Bait as far as um, that'd be a good card, Journey Bait. Hopefully this is just mono white, because if it is, we can just uh, call white when it comes up. All right. Well, we've got a pretty nice little plan here. He, he's, he can't block if he does block here. I'm just going to keep smashing through here. And again, if we trip the unicorn, see, we're up against what looks to be a non-direct uh, damage based build. So still not dead. We trip the bodyguard. We can trigger angelic renewal two times. Three times, fool. Creatureless Infect was a fun deck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's that's all about the name. I think that was that's our version of clickbait. People are like creatureless in fact. It's like yes, but in the end you're just like, well, why not just play like a kill all deck because that just works better. He's letting it through. He's seeing the light. Here we go, fighting the good fight. Boy, if we get another priest, this is gonna be fun. And why do I need such a long name? Creatures? <laughs> Change my mind. <laughs> so good to have you back. Why do I need such a long name? All right. Well, should we kill? Should we... Uh, there's some some options here. Uh, let's... Uh, let's show him the error of his ways. I guess we'll just get rid of a permanent. I don't want him bouncing it with another Skyfisher. You can do that, by the way. If he plays a Skyfisher, if I don't block that Cather and comes back, he can replay the Cather. All right. Something's going down. Let's see what it is. Exile a creature with power two or less. No. I'm going to say protection from white. And I will use this ability. Because he's playing exile stuff. Yes. Hey, check that out. Double bodyguard. Goodness. Boink. The four life would be nice, but I'd rather keep my creature alive, please. boop doo And just like that, we prevail. Do -do -do. Here we go. Oh, look at that. That's pretty fun, huh? Hey, why not? Oh, do it again. Before combat, please. Any more tricks? This is like the Mr. T bo of bodyguards here. He's like, I'm back, baby. Woo! -hoo. Remember, has flash. So we're going to play it for surprise value as we smash in here. So monocolor strategies, this really shines against... It's when you get those toolbox decks that it can get a little ugly. I'll throw this on here. Doink. Now we're a little worried about white because our solid footing will fall off. That's okay. We're coming in for six right now. And see, it's a permanent six. It's not like a green effect where you have that uh, explosive cannon turn and they fog and you're out. Your whole hand's gone. This just keeps hitting and it keeps protecting and it keeps your creatures out. And I believed in it enough to, uh, like I said, enter it in a league. Didn't go so well, but. I mean, it was one of those things, too. Like, I think my first matchup was um, the uh, uh, Evan Card Justice just kill everything style deck where it was just dead, dead, dead. And, like, all Innocent Bloods, all Edicts, all, you know, Chainers, and then um, everything that doesn't target. And it was just, ugh, it's depressing. I swear sometimes life, you're just on camera as far as, I mean, I know I'm on camera now, but you all know what I mean. What am I talking about? All right, so here's a good scenario. Oh, it gets a double bodyguard again. Note to self, pretty good card. Uh, he's getting rid of the solid footing. Am I reading that right? He is. Okay. That's fine. Strange choice. He probably just misclicked, but it saves us from having to use our bodyguard. Boy, he's got no respect. Wonder what he's gonna block. Did you sight in lights? I, it's the uh, first game, buddy. But yeah, good call. Thank you for reminding me because that is a fairly newer card. I want to uh, just feign a little bit of weakness here. We're just gonna throw this out and look look like we kind of are out of combat tricks. But y'all know we we're not. That's some creepy art, isn't it? Woo wee! That'd be pretty terrifying to see on a battlefield. Never really looked at that close for all the. Thousands of times I've attacked with it. Alrighty, let's attack here. And we'll probably got the win if he blocks incorrectly. We'll go like this. 
if I wasn't playing against white, you know, we've got so many ways to win here because we could give everything like protection from white and all these other things. But for all right now, we're just going to do this. Um, we'll rock like this again. That way we'll kill it. And we've got another option here. Okay, he'll definitely be dead next turn because I can just make this pro-white and attack. Well, keep in mind, too, that uh, prismatic strands could keep him alive one more turn. But... Uh, these are pretty sweet. Ekerclaw Murs, I, I just beat Boros the other night. Um, they had like three strands in the yard, and I think I put a picture on Facebook or, or something. It was like a 10-8 first strike protection from red and white against a Boros deck <laughs> and trample, or, or not trample, vigilant. I forget. It was it was obscene. It looked like uh, something Brian Kibler would be jealous of, so very nice. So yeah, if you like retro gaming, check out that dude's channel. Because it's pretty cool. My son's really into anything old school like that. I'm just going to put down White Weenie. There's a lot of W's so far. At win-win, White Weenie with a win. Yeah. Draylon13. My son is just... He was born old. He should have been born, like, in the 80s. He's just... He loves all those pixelated games, anything old school. We're going to lose a bow. So I'm going to have to... Uh, make sure to... Uh, if you haven't done it already, uh, little fight, email me his channel again so that I can just give it to Aaron because I think he'll he'll probably want to follow pretty pretty regularly. All right, um, Orm's Cure is not really going to do much of anything, so I'm going to lose these for right now. We're just going to look at it here. We've got our enchantments. We're bringing in Light of Hope because we saw a whole lot of enchantments, and in the end, you can go for the kill with that plus one one counter. Sometimes relevant, uh, gaining four lives always relevant, and destroying enchantments is pretty good times. Ah, now then. And we're not even really worried with this kind of a bill that, like, standard bearers normally be like, oh, no, we got to, you know, because we can just make it protected from white and then uh, go from there. Do -do -do. Uh, let's see. I got one more spot. Um, You know, I'm going to keep one long bow in. That way, if... Uh, I just keep it flexible. All right, let's go. Drillin13 says, I've been playing a ton of Sega games lately, but Tuesday we are starting to play through a Metal Gear Solid on PS1. Nice. I'm a big fan of the original Diablo. One of these days I th think I'm going to just stream that. Just, I mean, the, the original, like none of this two, three, the upcoming stuff, just the gritty old dark, spooky, good stuff. I'm going to keep this. It's a bit clunky, but let's do this. Yeah, I was a big Nintendo kid. One of my favorite games was Rygar on Nintendo. But if you if you get like any of these little download memes or whatever, there's a really bad arcade version that's just terrible. But the the one that had really good music for 8-bit music and stuff. So stay a while and listen for sure. Yes, thank God for gaming, right? This is like 2020 was like the year of the gamer, if, if it was anything, because everybody's just stuck inside. And thankfully, we've got these things to lean on, right? Keeping us sane. I don't know how other people do it. All right, we'll lead off with this and go from here. Okay, we're getting some variety. We've seen Rakdos and White Weenie. I haven't seen White Weenie in a while. That's some pretty lands there. I like that because it's the promise of the storm. But there's too much blue in the sky there. It's kind of depressing. I had to set up a network in my house with four PCs. Oh, yeah, yeah, Paladin 19. I did the same thing. We used to have big old parties where everybody bring over their gigantic, like, 80-pound machines and spend four hours getting everything into a closed network. And so, oh, Speaking of which, oh, my God, I can't believe I forgot to plug this at the top of the show. My wife and I have been binging hard on um, the show on Netflix. It was first on A&E, but it's called... Halt and Catch Fire, and we're on like season three right now. Uh, there's four of them, and it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. It's so good, but it's about the beginning of computers and, and the whole, you know, Nintendo's mentioned a lot and all these things. It's it's highly, highly, highly recommend it. I miss land parties. Actually, I miss people. <laughs> That's why do I need such a long name. Yeehaw. All right, here we go. I better pay attention. Something's going to sneak through, and I'm going to be blabbermouth here and lose the game. Here we go. Here we go. All righty. Uh, well, I guess we could just kind of move forward with this plan. I'm just going to drop the renewal and s stay with it. Boink. Such a pretty card. 
Is this, you know who? Yeah, Rebecca Gway. I shouldn't even have to look. I don't. I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful painting. All right. So why do I need such a long name? Why have you been gone for so long? What's been going on? Do you have some big upheaval in your life? New job? Move across the country? That sort of thing? Or did you just uh, get your PC stolen? Or give us the backstory, my friend. All right. I have talked about this. Uh, we got bottlenose bourbon coming up at the break, so I'm going to go get a coffee refill, but don't you, or you're going to miss it. Or you can just go on YouTube and watch it. All right. Doo -doo -doo. We have done this. Done that. And that. Okay. My little talking points. Brand new commercial. Yes. And my, my buddy Eric Bergen did the uh, VO for it. I had to pitch shift his voice and slow it down about 10% and I got it just it sounds exactly like I heard it in my head sometimes if you take a, a voiceover read and you like make it go to like maybe 92% if you want to slow it down or 107 if you want to speed it up odd numbers seem to work better for the uh, algorithms and such but anyway um, yeah really really cool stuff um, he uh, he said the word and I wrote it because it looked good on the page, but my God, was it hard to say. It was Tree Folk Oak Barrels. <laughs> and he never missed it. He just, every time, just boop, 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 like it was nothing. I was like, wow. I tripped up every time if I said it at full speed. And they're, they're fire blazed with the breath of kiln fiends, like these custom-made oak barrels to put the bourbon in. So idyllic range. That's a card. I'm glad we're seeing this. This is a really turned out to be a good show because uh, all these things are relevant. A lot of times people want to put this in wide. In fact, I would urge against it, but uh, welcome to try it. Hey, Rick. Do, do, do. All righty. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. All right. That might prove to be a little bit of a problem. This is going to be uncomfortable. I guess it just had a bit of a fallout with magic. I feel like the game doesn't trigger the same things as it used to. Oh, gotcha. I see. That's valid. No, it's very, uh, very pertinent right now, too, especially with... Um, uh, do, 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 Tron being such an ongoing problem, and they every reprint or every print of cards that comes out favors blue so egregiously, it's just like gets really ridiculous sometimes. Well, we're gonna die to that skyfish if we don't draw uh, an answer here pretty quick. But I'm gonna slow roll it a little bit. We're gonna bring this out. If I don't see uh, aforementioned uh, solid footing, we're not gonna be on solid footing very long, and uh, this might turn into a bit of a race. Let's see here. I don't... Well, you know what? I want to get in right now. So I'm going to throw this on here. I'll say white. And we're going to trigger this for a big old yes. Good to know. Yes. Go like this. Click nice and slow. White. Protection from itself. Take that. Whoa. So, so far, so good with the list. I'm sure we'll lose a game or two here or there, but it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I'm kind of weird that way with Magic. I almost never burn out. But if I play too many, uh, like, tourneys and stuff, I can, you can definitely, like, on a Sunday, if you play in the big challenge and stuff, definitely don't want to play that evening. Or, like, my son will be like, hey, let's play Paper Magic. I'm like, oh, I'm spent, kiddo. Can't do it. But I think my 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 MTG glass fills up a lot quicker than most. That skyfish is going to be a problem. Now we're probably going to need to, um, if we do draw that uh, flexible card, we're probably just going to need to uh, use it for the life gain here. I know it's no for many people, but it was the first time it hit me this hard. Oh, played magic since he was 12 and suddenly stopped working for me. Oh, uh, my buddies, I see. Well, it's good to have you back, and we're happy to see you again, my friend. Thanks for coming by, even if it's... Not your gaming. That's uh, very pertinent to that uh, show that I was mentioning, Halt and Catch Fire, on Netflix. Now um, they're they're discovering the community angle and and how kind of it's like, wow, that's really oh man, this is going to be the death knell for us. We can't, um, I can't have protection from artifacts. 
That's a bummer. Boy, oh boy. Uh, yeah, we're dead next turn. Let's find solid footing, please. Psycho. Solid footing? No. Okay. Well, the hell with you then. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm. I can't do that. If I give that pro white. Dang it, I want to know a dang thing has vigilance. I think I'm just going to scoop here, guys. We'll play it out. See what goes down, but. Uh, best case scenario, he blocks the golem with this, but I mean, we're just dead here. We really needed to step into the uh, enchantment we all know and love. But even then, I would take, what is this now, a uh, six? Yeah, it's gross. I'm going to attack with both. I can't really, can I? Yeah, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to block that. I can't confirm that he'll do that, and I want to have enough blockers if he just goes all out blitz here. So when where there's snow around here, going to look outside. Oh. Boy, I tell you what. I've been I'm in shorts. No sh no socks, you know, how cold I've been after all the weight loss and such. I just can't can't get over this stuff. It's like a heat wave here. I think it was like 79 or maybe even 80 yesterday. We had our front door wide open to like 10 at night slept with the window open the fan on i mean global warming's a thing not gonna get any denying from me my goodness remember even 10 or 15 years ago for the most part it was you know pretty chilly until around late march april Sometimes all the way into May. What's cool about living on the coast, though, is that uh, actually when June and July hit, it's usually very overcast and feels like I'm, I'm living in uh, Norway or something. So that's pretty cool. How much did you lose, Deluxe? Oh, 45 uh, pounds. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a long haul. Keeping it off, too. Hey, Energize XX. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for chiming in. We're dead. All right. It's about time we lose. We'll go into game three and uh, smash face. Let's see what he does here. Is he a coward or is he going for it? He's going for it. Good times, good times. All right. Well, the best thing we can do is this to this. I don't know why I'm blocking here. I mean, we're just going to lose anyway. These are the best blocks. And before this goes down, we'll give this pro white. I'm just doing this if a kid's watching wants to know what the uh, optimal usage is here. It's this, but it's all for nothing because of this uh, idyllic Grange doing some work on Skyfisher. Oh, this just in. I don't do math very well. <laughs> MTM Tat <laughs> in the house. Good to see you. Thank you, my friend, and one of our most ardent uh, supporters on Buy Me a Coffee. So appreciate that. Palace Sentinel showing up. Man, I sure wish I could have access to just one wrath effect. Just like payment for over overextending. Sucker. Oh, thanks a lot, Solid Footing. That's nice of you to join us. Yeah, Jack. All righty. Well, this is pro wide already, and I can't do nothing with that. So I think uh, let's just do this for the fireworks here. I'll play this. Uh, we can, let's see, if I trip this, I can get that back and then replay it. That's kind of fun, right? Watch this. We only have the bodyguard, so we'll, we'll go get them back. We'll play it. That's going to look weird, but I'm going to make this fall off on purpose uh, because that's, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. Right? We can't win this one, right? Oh, I can't even target it. <laughs> Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. That's right. Now, now it's out of range. I thought I could uh, grant it that, but uh, it's protected for a reason, folks. Uh, uh, sick. That's a lot of weight. Congrats. Nice. All right. We'll let him have it here. We'll go off to game three and see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, why do I need such? I don't want to get into it too much. It's, it's. Uh, but yeah, the, my, the cliff notes is, um, yeah, COVID and all that stuff. And I, I got on the scale one day. And I was like, whoa. I was like, this is not going to happen to me. And my brother lost a ton of weight using the new map. And I can't recommend it enough. It gets a little tedious towards the last bit. But it's science. Not really any sort of fad stuff. Very slow and steady. About pound, pound and a half a week. And um, yeah, I'm back to what I weighed in about high school. All right. Ah. You know, do you think they got rid of their enchantments or they just didn't draw them? It felt like they didn't have them. I really like the longbow in this situation because uh, that idyllic range can get out of hand, but I don't think it requires bringing in two. 
Yeah, I think we're boarded right here, guys. I, I just uh, they just outdrew us. That's all. No snow. Draylon, what what state you in, my friend? Listen to color comment. Oh, it was quite good podcast. Yeah, there are a lot of podcasts. My, um, I don't think uh, popper focused podcasts work more than about four or five episodes. You just. It's no offense to anybody that's tried it or is doing it or whatever. There's a lot of good ones out there, but you can just feel them, you know, stretching the content. And it's like, uh, you know, or it turns into my biggest complaint is the uh, the reading show. It's like, well, this card and then they go uh, enchant creature gets plus one, blah, blah, blah. And it, for me, it's like that's not that's not good radio or bo- broadcasting. It's just regurgitation. Woo, what a hand. All right, we'll keep this. We get one more land. This is the kind of hand, though, I, I'm happy this is happening. Because if I get screwed, you'll see it. We have 23 lands in this thing. And this is the kind of hand that, that can bury me sometimes. It's like, okay, you got everything. Here we go. We've got a detour. We've got the we got the hard hitter. And watch. We'll get like a bodyguard, and then we'll be stuck at two lands. South Carolina. Woo. Didn't, didn't know you guys uh, got that cold. It's like when I grew up in the Tahoe area, my relatives in Texas on my mom's side, we went to visit when I was a little kid, and where I was talking about how much it snowed, and I, you know, that's how I made a lot of my money to buy transformers and things was just snow shoveling people's driveways. And twenty bucks is a, for a driveway was a good deal for them, and it was a fortune for a kid because that was a, you know eighties pricing back then. Anyway, they thought I was lying about uh, it snowing and snowing in California. Draylon's family, literally. Oh, very cool. Excuse me. All right. There's that third plane. Man, I think the decks uh, feels bad for letting me down so hard in the league. So it's showing up today. Good times. Good times. All right. Yeah, my my wife wants nothing to do with South Carolina because when I went out to visit Little Fight, um, out of the graciousness of, of his pocketbook, it was such a cool little adventure. But we woke up, raining morning, and there's an alligator in his backyard, about 10 feet long. <laughs> I sent a picture of my wife. She was just like, yeah, I don't want to live with prehistoric monsters when I go to check the mail. <laughs> Popper Tim, hey You always know people are old school and very cool if they're, uh, if they're capping up. It's probably our most misunderstood feature, uh, Popperganda. Taking a bit of a gamble here. If he does have a journey, we're going to be kind of screwed here. Um, do I just run into this? I think I do. Nah, I'll wait. I'll wait. If he kills it and then he has a journey follow up, then we're just drawing dead. Um, yeah, you, you want to look no further prehistoric monster. Ah, dang it. Let's see what he's going to take here. Yeah, he knows what's up. Doesn't look like much, but Popper Tomb, love mono white. In fact, most people do. It seems to be kind of a fan favorite. That's why we tend to run it about twice a year try to keep it about six or seven months apart usually but there's usually new cards that come out white combat tricks worth exploring i was tempted to like i said shove in like two tethmos and i was like wait a minute i don't have i have a lot of enchantments that are instant speed but not many instants or sorceries and that was kind of frustrating Alrighty, well uh we can just go like this this is when it can get a little clunky because we've got sentinel's eyes um now i can run in here and get a few favors but i'm going to wait for him to expend that or should i uh, we don't really have a way to protect this will we get one and this is when it gets a little clunky with solid footing because i don't really want to give that you know hit less do I do this? I think we just slow roll this, guys. I'm just going to hang back. He's going to want to ping this. We're going to react, and then we're going to have we'll, we'll have a better game. Now, remember, solid footing only works on Vigilance. So in this scenario, I probably want to put it on the other Lost Leon, and so it just becomes a 3-2, and it still hits for 3. Got to be careful with that little switcheroo. So. <laughs> Wussies. <laughs> I'm a wussy when it comes to the ticks. I can't do ticks. I will never live east of the Mississippi If I do, I will be in a plastic bubble. <laughs> That's guy and bugs. Yes, I know. I'm kind of a. Yeah, 
There we go. Keeping stuff alive. And watch our life total here a little bit. We got some nasty of, of an infect. If we can just get through. Vigilance? <coughs> Very uh What's the word I'm looking for? It's very um, misunderstood. It's very uh, underestimated. That's the word. One of the oldest combos with the Sky Fisher. Nice to see it back. The old school return the javelin ear play. I guess that answers a question if he took journeys out because our dude's locked up. Yeehaw. You know, the psychological tick head games, right? I lived just east of the Mississippi and got Lyme disease from ticks last year. See that little fight? It's nasty creatures. Everybody should just do a big reset and burn them all. I know in uh, Texas they have the Lone... Uh, what is it called? The Lone Star Tick? It's It's just in the South Texas area. And you talk about some creepy tick evolution. This thing, when it bites you, not only catch a disease like Lyme and stuff like that, it makes you allergic to meat. Look it up. It is some creepy stuff when you start thinking of like the creepy crawlies and uh, uh, what nature is capable of like doing. It's it's just like, how on earth does that even work? That is just wicked. All right. <clears throat> we got some good options here, folks. I mean, we're just going to go all in here. Bonk. That's a whole lot of hitting, and let's what the first strike is very relevant here. Um, that's gonna go for four. I'm just gonna come on in here and we'll keep solid footing back. We could still draw the goods, or benevolent blessing would just be a door stopper right now. We would just stop everything from happening. So, do do do. Oh, neighbor and bo boss both got allergy due to it. Nice to in Memphis. Yikes, boy, that's see. That's what happens when you favor tick country. They just keep invading. They, they never go away. And uh, bad news, we're just speaking about the whole global warming and stuff like that. Um, it's going to be kind of a ticks climate. Everything's kind of gearing towards them being able to, like, you know, thrive and that sort of thing. So pretty trippy. Creepy crawlies, I tell you. It's just beef. <laughs> there it is. See, you turn in for some popper content and you learn about science and uh, nefarious arachnids and such. All right. This game could go either way. Uh-oh. Don't like where this is going. Good news. He can't block. If he attacks, he can't block with two out of three of those. Cool. I love when they don't attack with the that dude. So now I can kind of go all in here. Uh, he'll probably block the Leonin. Take the six, and then I'll be able to use solid footing as just a combat trick. Oh, it is. So now keep in mind, Benevolent Blessing has that huge upside. If I draw it right now, I can call pro-white, and my stuff stays on it. Damn it. More blockers. All right. I really need the pro-white card to show up. I'm going to get nibbled in the air with hawks. I'm going to get hawked. Mm hmm hmm That'd be even creepier if it was just beef, but it sounds like it isn't. Um, <laughs> we educate here, too. <laughs> Ticks kill the calf near where I grew up in Montana. Sucked it dry. Ugh, God, guys, stop talking about ticks. It's going to make me cringe, and I'm going to lose the game. I'm the one that brought it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is looking grim. I'm going to attack with everything i got to cut these numbers down and make him feel like we're on the offensive here. If I don't draw a Benevolent Blessing, we're in deep trouble. Another reason to stay inside and play games. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like it outside as long as it's dark and cold. All righty. Well, uh, hmm. should I wait around or should I? I'm just going to get in for what I can get in for here. Boop. Boop. Dink. For infect. I don't know what he thinks. Oh, yikes. See, this is... Sounds like he's got some aggro. He's playing to his outs, that's for sure. This is definitely going to be the way to get me if he just keeps that air power up. 
Vigilance is such a beast when you have some first strike dude on the ground. It's nasty. All right, we got four Infect in. Let's uh, draw one of our sideboard cards, please. This has been a pretty long game. Yeah! And we take five. We've only got probably uh, two turns left, Tops. I've got a uh, Benevolent Blessing, please. That would be... That would be idyllic. We're getting hawked. Tell ya, the hawks of Jersey. Or Boston, sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't try that. Cyber cars are supposed to be good, I've heard. Yeah, when you draw them. I'd probably risk it too. Steak is my favorite. Yes, I don't know how vegetarians do. God dang it. Ugh. Way to put on the gas, Joven Hood. Hey, just in time to not work. That's great. Well, what shall we put it on? I mean, we got to put it on that, right? We drew it perfectly, but he's got the blocker here. That's so frustrating. But I'm glad you're going to see all these enchantments not fall off. Boy, is he glad he drew that, eh? I'll see white. Ding. And now it's protected from everything. Whoa. We'll go like this to try to tempt him here. I doubt he'll miss the uh, the win here, but benevolent blessing. Speaking of, in fact, remember that old Demir Proliferate Poison deck? Yes. Yeah, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. All right, well, we get him to eight. Who would have thought Razor Golem would mean the di difference? But that they'll teach you, folks. Diversify, right? I mean, he's got a bad diversification here because he can't block with a black creature, but... Uh, Razor Golem used to, I used to play, when I first got into Popper, I had a four Razor Golem deck. Pretty similar to what he's playing. Of course, Core Skyfisher wasn't out yet, but all right, we'll let him take us down as we take exactly seven. Do, do, do. <laughs> Best deck. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. That was the King of Janktastic. I think we even won a few games. I think we ended up going like 3-2 when we did that show. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. Hey, guys, I'm going to get some more coffee. We got Bottle Gnome Bourbon coming up very soon. Actually, you know what? I'll just go to it right now, folks, and uh, we'll be back right after a few commercials. See you in a signature bottle gnome bourbon for over five centuries. We use three different types of grains, crop rotated corn, rye with infused relics, and malted barley from Ginju fields. Only the finest radiant fountain water is used, which contains limestone that contributes to a better tasting bourbon. Hoping to add nutrients like mage mark magnesium and calcium that our newly sprout swarm yeast needs to thrive. Next, we mill our grains every upkeep and cook them using the fiery breath of kiln fiends. From there, we vapor snag mutagenic samples till we get the alcohol content exactly right. Finally, our bourbon is aged in new, fire forged and patented in truthful oak barrels, a distinction we take pride in. As seasonal rituals change, temperatures rise and fall, and our bourbon interacts with the woodland spirits. The color and the flavor of the now fully mature bourbon comes from the caramelized Sprite sugars and the charred oak until it is ready to be untapped and bottled. Bottle Gnome Bourbon. A magically reinforced blend of the finest quality. Available at all Singer Superstores. This world is one of legend. Many realms, epic sagas, bound by one truth. Viking or Valkyrie, Elf or Dwarf, all belong to the World Tree. All are supplicant to the gods. Gods who travel between the realms to do their bidding for peace, for bloodshed, or for their own amusement. But what if there was a way to harness this power? A weapon with the ability to protect all. A weapon of pure strength. Forge for a god. Or you 
in more creative hands. <laughs> A weapon of unimaginable chaos! <laughs> Who's ready for some fun? And we're back. All right. Well, we're one and one. Feels like we played like 30 games, but ah, I tighten it just right. I just got back in my seat. A little out of breath, actually. Got my new coffee, and here we go. Hey, one of our new uh, clan members, Bingo Banjo. Met him last night. Hung out with me in Little Fight. So good to see him on the show live here. All righty. That was a good one. All right. Oh, yeah. How'd you guys like it? Uh, very cool. Well, we have everything but mana. Uh, we're going to say mulligan this. Boop. And we'll keep this. We got two critters. We got a way of protecting them and Orm's Cure. As Little Fight pointed out, cool tech with the rather than. And it uses a mask. Of course I'm going to put it in my deck. We'll keep this. It's our only protection spell. Ugh. You know what? I'm going to get rid of a plane. We're going to sit down. I think we need to open a distillery and make magic a bourbon <laughs> eSport. Yes, I want some bourbon now. <laughs> a little early in the day for us over here on the West Coast, but hey, depending on where you are, drink up. As long as you do it responsibly. All right, here we are. Things are looking good. We've got a uh, kill color. I'd rather it be red with Orm's Cure in hand, but we'll slow roll this a little bit and see how it goes. Doop, doop, doop. Yeah, I spent so long getting that bottle animation to, to work and sitting them in that little chrome, I mean, a gold, golden body, and yeah, good stuff. That again, there was a fan uh, uh, recommendation just last week. It was just they brought up a uh, bottle gnome, uh, something that's distilleries, and I believe it was Terry Core the second, and he, his angle was, um, I think it was Bonders bourbon, like as in Bonders ornament, but um, I wanted to be a little bit more on the nose with it, so. Um, I went with bottle bottle gnome, but again, wouldn't happen if you didn't send us an email, popaganda@gmail.com. If you got any cool little ideas or play on words that could maybe make a little spoof commercial, we are almost at forty. <laughs> very very proud of that little uh, move. Alrighty, we got a lot of creatures coming at us, um, and I don't want them to die. So, problem with Zuberas is that uh, they have just about every color, so uh, we might lose this one. We're going to bring out a Lost Leon in here and hope for the best. I can discard the Sentinel's Eyes. That's always a good call. <laughs> Responsibly drinking stopped in 2020 for me. He says, why do I need such a long name? <laughs> yeah, I've been partaking a little too much myself, but always at night, usually over a game of Magic. My chess scores have just been plummeting because it's always at the end of the night I feel like playing a game. And <laughs> I look back next morning and I'm just like, oh, boy, that was that was awful. Ah, too much uh, <clears throat> bottle, bottle gnome bourbon, right? All right. Yeah, I got, gosh, we got gin and tonic, two of those. We've got uh, Marit Lager. We've got bottle gnome bourbon. So, yeah, it's definitely cornering the market on the uh, popper liquor store, that's for sure. All righty. Well, um, I want to just kill this so it's on my terms. Yeah. I'm going to do that. We're going to block. And then I want to show you this. So we have to do this very we're gonna tap by tap and untap creature you can know. Okay. Choose any target. This one. Now tap it. Okay. Boink. Now I lose a card. He loses more cards. I'll get rid of, boy, I don't know. I think I just want to kind of go all in here. I'm going to lose the plane. I was saying Sentinel's Eyes, but I kind of want that one to round up punch, and he's got, he's got to kind of focus on uh, if he wants to stay alive. Okay, cool. Thank you, Deck. It's nice when uh, it agrees with me there. Link to our commercials on YouTube. Hey, thank you for that little fight. Um, I have a few commercial ideas I will. I still need to send in. Awesome. Very cool. Again, we do, might not use them all, but we sure like to hear them all, and sometimes, like that last example, it just blends in and turns into its thing. So... Well, they're not going to be any more attacking here. Our mana's right. As long as he doesn't have an edict effect, I'm feeling okay here. 
cool. I just want to keep milling, I mean, just shoving these creatures off the board. Trample would be nice. I've looked into the um, artifacts that can grant it too, but in the end, it's... Uh, just want to keep it enchantment based in this build anyway. Do you like The Office Deluxe? Uh, you know, I've been told about that show a lot. I don't like that style. I I can see the genius of it. And I know it's a good show. Um, it's just that I call it the NBC style. Um, there's a new show my wife started watching, The Mayor, and it, you can tell the exact same producers and editors, or I should say directors and editors, are working on that because the cadence that the shots go through everything it's just it's like clockwork and i don't like that style it's kind of lazy not saying the office is lazy i'm just uh i don't have to qualify that <laughs> all right here we go uh I, yeah this is when we don't want this but we might want it for the uh, kaboom factor right yeah it will reduce this by one but this will reduce it by th i mean increase it by three so if he uh, doesn't block here yeah, I like to when I when I have the trick, I like to kind of act like, oh, there's only one thing that can go wrong here in their line of thinking, maybe. So, what about the commercials in Better Off Ted? I don't even know what that is, buddy. I'll have to check it out. Well, uh, uh I think we just go for it here. Um, I don't want to discard stuff, and he's going to let this through. I'm going to hit for six. A little clunky, but I'm glad it happens. Shows you, you know, it's not all rosy. That's solid footing sometimes can go a little awry, but you got to use it when you can. And I know he's playing a pretty heavy discard element, so that's why I just wanted to get it. There it is. That's why I wanted to go hellbent. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you can send that to me, uh, do, 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 Popper Tim, I'd appreciate it. Can't be blocked and can't block. All right. I've got a pretty good team coming up here. Ah, man, what's up with all the colorless tech out there? First Razor Golem beats us, and now this dripping tongue Zubera is probably going to um, keep us at bay because uh, those are colorless spirits that it makes. I can see that being the turning point in this game if I uh, don't draw something. That doesn't help. But I don't want to discard it either. So I'll just play it. He's probably going to block with a something. Here we go. Let's, hopefully we can kill it now on our terms again. If K for a few, need a bathroom break. All right. Yeah, that was one bathroom break you don't want to miss. Let the bottle gnome bourbon. We have done that. And we have taken that one out. There we go. All righty. So we're going to have to discard, but we're hellbent, so that's cool. And they take one more. Anything we draw, we're just going to play now, because all these uh, Ashen Skin Zuberas that make you discard when they die and such. So played uh, Zuberas one time on Propaganda. That's not a good streaming deck. you got to really watch the order of things and concentrate. Mad respect. It's a, it's a real deck. Any of these aristocrat-style... Um, where you can sacrifice your critters on your own terms. It's pretty cool stuff. Alrighty, coming on over with the outcast, might as well. Dum -ba -dum. Thank you for joining me, everybody, on this uh, Saturday propaganda. Back back to our roots, playing White Infect. Last week we had the kitchen table show. Like I said, a uh, little camera focus issue I had, and I didn't know till after the show. It's crestfallen about that. I'm such a stickler for quality, and I was just like, Ugh, I was so. But the banter was good. The one camera shot was pristine of the wide angle, and then the one we needed of the cards being played, it was like uh, on infinity focus, and it was like, oh boy. Alrighty, well, uh, he doesn't have a discard outlet here, so I'm gonna make him seem all, all seem mysterious right i'm assuming he's got the block sack tricks going on here if my dude dies i can just fin graph it <laughs> why do i need such a long name yeah there was a it goes through phases there's some every once in a while it'll pop up as a 5-0 somewhere or and whatnot but got to be quite the pro with it to pull that off i think huh He's getting these spirits back left and right. 
let's open up the um, game log. Just, we'll see what he's grabbing. He's grabbing the uh, discard dude. All right. I like. I want the colors to be all matching. So if I can get rid of that dripping tongue, that'll be good times. Uh, he, he's got to. He's got to commit next turn, right? Uh, we got him at. Well, maybe not next turn. I still keep dinking him with that. Sometimes Echo Cloud Mara just seems so underwhelming when people don't block him, you know. He's a beast when you block him, boy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Daryl in 13. Um, if you're joining us late, he's got a very cool um, Twitch channel, old school retro gaming and stuff. But I was telling my kids, um, there used to be a Zelda currency in my uh, grade school. I remember my friend Randy and I were the only ones that knew where the sword, uh, the great sword or whatever it was called in the in the graveyard, like what tombstone it was at. And I I made like sandwich money and things like that. It sounds silly to people now because you just look it up on the Internet and stuff. But back then it was like, you know, you had to know somebody. And we were the first kids in, in like our entire county that knew this stuff. And so we'd get a few bucks here, a few bucks there. And then, of course, you know, everything goes away and or like where you had to blow the whistle at the lake to make it disappear to go into the steps and all that stuff so yeah starship troopers i just remember that being a bad movie is there something funny in starship troopers i'm not quite sure i just remember that being like very digitized poorly when it when it came out all right here we go i like this is he going to make us discard right now he is that'd be so cool if it had flash oh well okay you need if it was a creature. Oh, well. <laughs> Angelic Renewal with, might work in that deck, right? Again, I'm not going to remember the chat, guys. So just send me a propaganda at gmail.com. Send me a quick link to whatever it is you, you're talking about. We'll go from there. Uh, feet to the fire time. Here we go. Let's see what he can do. Attacking. <laughs> I'll have to give Troopers another look then because Shiraz and I usually I just remember seeing it in the theaters and there were even back then that was that was gosh I was like in high school or something and uh, might have been was a little bit later I don't know but I just I just remember being very critical of some of the effects that I saw I'm no fun to watch movies with I don't know how my wife puts up with me sometimes but when it's perfect it's great so uh, one thing I think you can take to the bank. It's if I recommend something like that show Halt and Catch Fire or, you know, anything I've re recommended in the past, it's usually very solid. Solid intel, folks. All right. Coming on over with this. We get in. All right. Well, uh, we're getting something out of the deal here. I don't want to see any more of those colorless spirits. I hate colorless. Well, it was that one stupid computer thing where... Ah, yeah, I'll have to look at the links in the email to see what, what it is y'all talking about. But Okay, here we go. We're going to kill some stuff here. Uh-oh. We are hellbent. Oh, man, that hurts. It's strange timing. Do I want... Depends what he does here. If he, okay, now I'll get it back. Boink. And it's back. Hey, all right. Look at this. Uh, Man, oh man. You know, I'd rather have the um, Vigilance here. Even though we just got that dude back. Let's, um, let's put this on here. Uh, now, this is when I really like... Uh, I mean, what am I talking about here? Um... Sentinel's Eyes, because you can get rid of the creatures based on the randomness of the hunted Fangraph. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're not caring about um, evasion, which is very rare, or protection, which is very rare, you can nix the bodyguards. Or if you you know, you know don't want to draw myrrh sometimes, so you can you can get rid of those. But for right now, we, we don't have anything, so I'll just get rid of two. It's such a cheap escape cost. It's ridiculous. I love it. Vigilance. Vigilance. He can't attack. I think Zubera is, uh, it's all based on the uh, person playing it. 
It's true of a lot of decks, but... All right, I like all these camp block creatures. If we can just mow down those leftover spirits, we might have something here. But if you want to join our clan, I'm not very uh, into that sort of thing, but we do have one now. The Propaganda Clan, thanks to Little Fight. He's made me the, uh, whatever, Invitor, because uh, Little Fight doesn't play nearly as much as me, so it only makes sense. But if you're into that sort of thing, hit me up. Not now, but uh, <laughs> anytime you'd like. Cool place to get together, get a good game in with somebody that's of the uh, Propaganda Knight family. A couple fans always suggested we do that a couple of months back, so we're getting there. I think Bingo Banjo's in it as of last night. I got nothing against clans. I just uh, I don't like tribalism in any form. So I feel a little hypocritical being in a clan, but whatever. All right. These are getting big. Here we go. Now, if we've got some sort of cast down trick, we've got Angelic Renewal right behind it. We're feeling pretty good. Drawing a bit dead. Beautiful taste in swamps. I really like this guy's taste in swamps. Eh, forest ain't too bad either, is it? You know, I've never seen that one. That's beautiful. Wow. I love old school lands, man. <laughs> Clanism. <laughs> All right, we can't do anything, so I'm just going to yield through this turn and chill. Do, do, do. All right, it's another W. Zuberas. This is like the, uh, the crazy random show here. This would be cool if we don't see one similar deck. All righty. Orm's Cure is nice and all, but uh, not feeling it. I think I'm going to bring in the uh, Gut Shots. I'm going to lose the bow. Let's look over everything here. The COPs aren't going to work at all. Uh, the Macabs, what do you guys think? I don't. I think I'm just going to be stuck looking at them or discarding them, so I don't like it. But, I mean, he does have a little bit of recursion angle with the uh, Graveyard, but I don't think it's worthy of uh, bringing in any sort of disruption on that level. Arms cures nice and all, but I kind of want these for just the guys that get in my way and I can mow them down. Go a little bit aggro here. I might regret the life loss, but... Um, and I don't think I need these at all. All right. Let's see what this does. Boop. What on earth? A <laughs> big old octopus. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. Bum -ba -da -dun. All right. Here we go. My son made a uh, modern dream trawler deck that is so hard to beat. It's beautiful. Can't tell you how much joy it brings me to have a son that's that good of a deck designer already. He's he's. Uh, I know there's a little father ego in there and stuff, but um, he's just a pleasure to watch play. Like almost weekly now, I will. I did this with White. In fact, I said, "Go make this better," and uh, he he just thought it was a flawed premise and didn't didn't really give this one much of a try. But he's done that with a lot of decks, and uh, I tell you, almost every time he opens my eyes to something. And I know that comes across just like, oh yeah, there's some dad bragging about his son. But um, I really, I think even if I was a stranger, I would. He's definitely kind of a student of the game, that's for sure. All right, we don't like this hand. It's nice our sideboard showed up, but it uh, took all of our lands with it. We're gonna mull again. Yep, open up the graveyard. This is a much better hand. We'll keep this. And uh, I'm going to get rid of the Leonin here. This will stay alive against a lot of his deck. This is going to die to everything. And um, yeah, I know it seems a little awkward getting rid of a critter there, but I mean, there's not that much removal in his list so far outside of combat. And we've, we've got the two big heavy hitters on combat damage already. So we're going to go like that because I said so. Sucka. Ah, I should have brought my Mr. T in the pocket. Anybody see that show last week where we were playing the little Mr. T sound bites? I pity the fool. Shut up, old man. You will not find a bigger Mr. T fan than this guy. Always like that dude. Funny backstory, too. Him with Stallone and being found. I guess he was like a pretty prominent bodyguard and 
Looked down the barrel of a gun in real life multiple times and stuff. And he's, uh, he's legit. I'm still working on a few cold and familiar lists. They're right up your son's alley. Yes. He's uh, the more complex, the better. Definitely uh, not like me that way. I, I like streamline efficiency and get them off, get them away f or off the board real quick. I'm not against that stuff. I definitely got the cranium to comprehend it. I just, um, I'm such an efficiency nut that if there's a quicker way to do it, I always lean that way. And that's why I've always leaned towards like combo or aggro or both. Very, very rarely do I want to, um, even like my mid-range strategies will just attempt to just kind of have some sort of crazy efficiency angle of, you know, recycling cards over and over again and such. All right, let's see what we're looking at here. Why on earth did this move over here? I never told it to do that. Yeah. All right, we got, uh, now is it automation or a Tom... Automaton. Which one is it? Let a fight? You speak, Deluxies. Great against counter spell decks and its ability not casting a spell. Good points. That's why I love me some fairy macabre, I tell ya. Well, I think we're just going to walk into a cast down here, but I ain't waiting around for it. Whoop! We've got another one right behind it. Deck's doing pretty good today. This is about what it feels like when I when I play normally. And that's why I've gotten to 23 lands. I know you're going to, the first person that sleeves this up digitally, you're going to go like, I don't need 23. I can probably get by with 20 or 19. Or You're going to lose a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. Second was perfect. Huh? Which second? I forget what we're talking about. The second priest? You can talk about some damn good artwork. It's so cool when you like a deck and then it has beautiful art. I mean, that should hang on a wall somewhere. That'd be a pretty cool uh, Halloween outfit, wouldn't it? Well, this might surprise you. I think I'm going to... Nah, I got to lose the myrrh. All right. Get out of here. We've got the uh, Haunted Fangraph right behind it. I think I'll go that route. Uh, oh, automaton. Thank you. See? You got to put that on your resume. Little fight that you speak deluxes. People be like, what? I got to clean my glasses here. They're not helping me right now. All right. Sorry about the little audio hit. And away we go. Let's see what we can do here. Yes. Okay. So now, my pretty. Thank you for showing up, sideboard. That's very nice of you. Anyway, we'll bring this back. I really want to hold off on this to that. Or we can use it as uh, discard fodder. Let's cycle. We might find something really good. Only my secluded steps make that sound effect, by the way. Anyway, let's uh, get edict proofed here. Did you add any new cards to White Infect? Oh, yes. Yeah, um, quite a few. At Sentinel's Eyes. We've got um, the Solid footed, Footing Angle and Benevolent Blessing. There's a lot of reasons to showcase it here. All right, let's just get rid of this dude. Boop. Dink. Pow. I'll draw a card, but I want to get rid of the uh, Sack Outlet. Not like he's going to block with it, but... Costs us two life. Oh, yeah, if you, somebody mind posting the list again. Or even better, send us an email on a very easy-to-understand guide of how to make that deck list thing appear. Everything I've looked into is a little like, huh? Head scratch. Do -do -do. Bow, bow. I can't get that... Uh, banjo from the uh, bourbon commercial off of my out of my head it's one of the funner parts when you when you're putting it together and edit and you and you find that perfect piece of music and you're just like yep like y'all all i'll notice anyway i go through and i'm like oh that's okay that's pretty good that's pretty good and then there's always one where you're like you can see the edit you're like okay done looking i like that part the discovery process damn that green zubera Ugh, not it but the things it makes, this deck's all hoping that you're playing one color, not 
19. <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna get a little bit more. Uh... Now, if I trip this, one, two, three. Yeah, I can bring it back. I'd rather do it end of turn, though. So, uh, man, this is gonna be really redundant, isn't it? Uh, if I come through there and, and that dies. I want stuff to. She's ah, opening up, up, up. No. I'm gonna do it now. Well, shoot, should I? Let's get this back. One, two, three. Yeah, and then they've got that new green enchantment. Was it Arachnoform that pretty much does it again? That's pretty neat. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of play right into his hands here, darn it. Oh well. We'll do stuff next turn, I promise. For right now, we're just infecting things. We've only infected him for one, that's pretty pathetic. Be interesting here in the States who's gonna win the football games today. I think Brady's going to be able to do it against Breeze. I don't believe in Breeze anymore. It's kind of like the same argument I had with Holloway. Or it just feels like, eh, losing a step. It happens to everybody. I'm sure it's happened to me. All right, all right. Here we go. Where was it? It was... Oh. Ah, I missed how to say it. <laughs> Automaton. Man, that's a lot of creatures and a lot of variety. I don't like this at all. We can't draw those gut shots enough. <clears throat> and this style, I don't know. This is when it's really fun. So another thing that's cool with this list is if you put the longbow on the priest, you attack with it, and then at the end of the turn, you can ping with it. A little hidden gem a lot of people aren't aware of. Probably because nobody plays it. Here we go. We'll keep things open here. Bloop. Got to be a bit frustrating on their end. All of our guys are doing double duty. We attack. We block. We do it all, folks. Saints pin bucks all day. Yeah, I don't really have a horse in the race. I just have, it feels like the uh, from an outsider's perspective that doesn't really care because my Niners are out. When I was a kid, I was a big Dolphins fan. They're they're on the upswing. They seem to be going in a good direction. But just from the litmus test, it just seems like uh, the Bucks are they're I don't know. It's like they're peaking. They're they're finding their groove right now. And the the Saints, I just don't know who they are. It's like the Rams. It just every other week, it just completely different team or whatever. I'm actually, I think I'm pulling mostly for Green Bay now. I you can't deny how awesome Aaron Rodgers is as a quarterback. He's just it's such a phenomenal year. But the one big question mark is that Aaron Donald on defense. It's like uh, if there's one thing the Niners are, always seem to beat Green Bay because they can their pass rush is so effective. Okay, we're drawing all kinds of cards. Yeehaw. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Why do I need such a long name? <laughs> if that is disappointment, I'm registering. <laughs> Six creatures. Dang it. Arr. Wasn't always a Niner fan. Brought my oldest brother and me closer together. I just started like, I really liked uh, Kaepernick when he was in there and the big turnaround that happened. We became kind of fans then. and Yeah, it's a lot of fun last year. But, my God, I've never, ever, ever seen a team get that decimated by injury. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, these are both facing the same way. That's a pretty cool little drawing. Look at that. Just be a little bit greener in the background, though. Bring out the contrast a bit more. All righty. Well, uh, I guess we'll lose one of our dudes. I mean, we can just bring him back. It's going to set us back a turn or two. One, two, three, four. They're pretty far away from recasting that, but there uh, there are two in his yard, so hopefully they don't get flooded. Kind of screwed here because uh, 
as time goes on, he's going to draw those lands out. And we're not really a go-wide deck, meaning we don't have a bunch of uh, cannon fodder little creatures to get in the way. Edicts hurt, and they hurt bad. And this is going to hurt. Holy cow. What do I do here? Uh, one, two, three. I'm going to take this one. Ooh. Uh, oh, faithful since then. I see. Yeah, Niners Ravens. Yeah, my friend, uh, it was the only game he went to, uh, two of my friends, uh, and uh, that that halftime show when the lights turned out and then they were coming all the way back. It was like, ah, oh, so, so cool. All right. Well, uh, I guess we attack. Here we go. Papa Tim says, my brothers are all heavy into sports. Get into it because everyone else. Yeah, it's kind of how I was with, uh, with that. I'm kind of a jock, too. Goes in phases. I'll tell you what, I'm. my oldest is really into basketball. I mean, he could he could be a sports announcer. He knows everybody's name. He knows all their stats. He's got a very good uh, basketball IQ and everything. But um, I just, NBA, it just feels like it was just over. Now it's on all the time, and everybody's always switching teams, and there's just no, um, they need more tribalism. <laughs> they need to. You know, back in the old days, like the, with Jordan and stuff, it was like teams stayed the same for a lot longer. Now it just seems like everybody's just kind of going over here. The next week they're on this team, and there's just no identity. It's frustrating. We got a 9-9 that's going to do some quick work on our hide if we don't do something about this. So we're going to go get another critter. Hey, big surprise. Did we play a land? Oh, man. I didn't think we played a land. Can I do this? Come on, let me do it. Come on, one more time. All right. Guess we can't. That's what sucks when you're playing uh, on a stream. These little things that you forget. I should have done that EOT in case he drops the uh, you-know-who, the discard man. Free agency and money has pretty much ruled all sports now, says Pelin 19 for sure. Yes, yes. I am weird, though, in that regard. I really like blowouts. I'm I'm a really cruel guy deep down. I like when it's like 80 to nothing. I'll I'll stay till the end of the game. I I I just find that fascinating. Yikes. Very nice move, Bingo Banjo. That is some cool artwork. Check this out. Oh, looks like I'm dead. <laughs> we'll check it out anyway from the grave, literally. Ooh, get this out of here. Got to look at this. Man, oh man, that's pretty. Now that's a card that does need to be uh, monochromatic. Is that the word? All right. Going for the tie break. Orum's Cure sounds like a pretty good idea now. Mm hmm. I'm going to bring in one cure. Actually, I'm going to bring in the longbows over the gut shot. Uh, are we just going back to how I built this? I think we are. See, so when you put the longbow, which on the uh, Priest of Norn, as I was saying, it's really cool because you can attack with the priest. It has vigilance, and then end of turn, you tap it. and you, So you're getting like a little two for one there. It's pretty cool. And I can get, you know what? I'm going to play both bows this time. Let's make sure we see this. Everything looking and sounding good, guys? Let me know in the chat. Keep it rolling. Keep it friendly. All that. I said I'm just one guy in a... Small little studio here. Doing my thing. Yeah, that is a pretty cool win condition. I'll say yes to this, open up the yards, and hope we get some goods. All right, I like this a lot. Keep that. That benevolent blessing, I'm going to just kind of, yeah, we'll just wait till it's convenient. All right, thank you for that. Popper Tim. Yeah, the discard element, though, I don't want to be hanging on the cards and waiting for answers. Normally, Graveyard Recursion, I'd do that, but he's got a pretty heavy uh, discard element, and I really like being hellbent against decks like that, just so kind of rubs egg in the face of the whole strategy, right? Let's lead off with the Bodyguard. I do that because I've got to try to stay aggro. Longbow's a nice play, but uh, I can't protect the Murr right out of the gates. 
How'd you guys like that uh, angelic renewal with bodyguard? That's pretty cool. They have two for one, right? I love it. So much so. Maybe I should put the fourth one back in. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Hopefully they just stay one color. Dang it. You know what? I'm going to attack. See if he wants to block that. Oh, Wicked Akuba and Longbow. Very nice. Thank you for the link there, Popper Tim. Yeah, that's one thing. I, I always come around to that when I'm trying to build Suicide Black. I'm like, oh, why, doesn't, why don't people play this? Or the uh, the little Shadow Dude, the Dalthui Slayer. Always one of my favorite cards. There's just a little bit better way to protect it. I love me some Shadow. Oh, man, the darn dreaded card. Blech. And kind of a longer show today. Maybe we won't play all five. We'll have to see. I might have to tap out. Wink, wink. All right. I'm going to play this. And we're going to put it on this. I'll drop another bodyguard. And then we'll drop the bow. And what do you know? I'll go from there. It'll still work on this combo, too. That'll be pretty cool. I'm going to uh, give this pro green right now. <laughs> yeah, it's surprising. I know the fog decks are really... Thanks to Spell Slam's design, boy, it's going to surprise I don't see it more. It's a very underplayed deck for as powerful as it is. Talk about a grind, though, boy. It's right up there with Tron when you know every match is going to be 55 minutes. <laughs> Unless somebody's just on tilt. All right, Stampede Pull, that's fine. The Dripping Tongue shows up. Let's see if Longbow can do some work here. All right. I'm put this on here. I gotta keep that other bodyguard around, so let's just hope that he uh if he doesn't block, he doesn't block. Now then. Do I just ping him, or do I uh, do some work with that Viserys here? I think I'm just going to ping him. Anybody got a problem with that? Speak up in the chat. I have it swapped back to pieces of the puzzle. Exactly. Yeah. I think that might be why it improves, actually. We got him on a pretty quick, not quick, what am I talking about? Very slow clock, six turns. Got to keep in mind, we can kill anything except for that dripper right now. You know what? I want to kill this uh, sack outlet now. I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but I'm going to do it. This is screw to ask, probably. Popper bling... Would you like to get as a popper tournament prize within reason? Budget cannot get too crazy. I'm not quite sure I understand him, Tim Tad. Are you hosting a tournament? Is it just like a random question for me? Or uh, is it to me? I don't know. <laughs> and then the last tournament I won, I gave away the prize. He's got it anyway. Darn it. I should have pinged him. Oh, tell us about it. Just elaborate a little bit more. Oh, this is the crew to ask. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, what's... Are you obviously online and stuff. I'm probably going to play Matt. Yeah. Yeah, ask the chat. Check out MTM Tat's question there. He's going to be... Uh, sounds like hosting a popper tournament. I don't want to tell tales out of school, if, if that's what it is. 
I would assume so, given the uh, audience, right? Hmm. All right. Well, if we do this, uh, let's cycle this. Let's see what we can get here. Well, it really wants us to have a blessing, doesn't it? Uh, let's throw this on here. Whoop. I'll say green. Or should I say black? I'll say, you know, maybe I should say black. I'll say black. We saw a cast down. I've got edict proof here. I'll call green next turn. If he doesn't start making us discard everything, right? Is this going through? Ooh, didn't expect that. Wow, okay. That's very generous, MTM Tat. Yeah, I've thought about doing that myself too. Having a big old there's quite a bit of awesome software out there that you can use. MTM Tat, send me an email reminder and I'll see if I can dig it up. Uh, I got invited to the God, it was some Italian thing at like three in the morning months back, and uh, I played in it and I was fat. It was so much better than like um, oh, what's the um, I mean for for an exterior sort of uh, platform, it was so much better than like using Gatherling, which is a uh, Popper Classic Tuesdays always using, and nothing against it. It's just kind of a clunkier program and. Insectile aberration plushy. Uh, it's got to be comment of the week. <laughs> Popper Tim, nice one. All right, cool. It's a creature. I'm happy. Now we are proof. Oh, shoot. Ah, I forgot to ping him. Unforgivable. Darn questions. <laughs> ah. Dang it. He should be at seven. Actually, he should be at eight, in fact, if I would've, wouldn't have pinged that other one. Uh, I thought that was the right pull at the time, but. Let's see. Yeah, these benevolent blessings are absolute garbage right now. This is all about pinging. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but if I lose, it's because of you. What do they say? Point the finger and three point back at you. My fault. Should be paying more attention. Can't believe it. I, that's just such a fundamental slap on the wrist when you're first learning magic, right? And you you learn like you're supposed to use Tim at the end of the turn for optimum efficiency. And then how many thousands of times has everybody missed that trigger, right? <laughs> Toothmaker, my punt is the biggest. I forgot it was Saturday and just got here. Hey, well said, my friend. Sir Ramsey's Toothmaker of Chatsuk is the man's full name. It's funny, um, Paul, on your uh, on our clan, when it when you see your name, it just runs off the page, and I can't extend it. <laughs> uh, pretty funny. We used to call that sushi. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. Oh, that's still my turn. Okay, I thought I forgot to ping again. All right, here we go. <laughs> hey, we've won a bit. Oh boy. I'm so glad I called black. We'll throw a black on the other one too, just so we get extra uh, mileage out of this stuff. I'll probably come in with these boys, right? No? All right, cool. End of turn, we will ping. We're not doing any cutesy stuff like a seer or a carrion feeder. We're going to ping you, sucker. Woo! You know, I can spread around that bow too. That's an option. We have pinged. They should be dead. Oh, well. Ooh, man, that's nice, huh? Let's, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's throw a blessing on this. <laughs> Call colorless, I wish. I'm going to say black again on that one. Just because we have seen some cast down. Now, do this is the one we'll sacrifice if uh, Chainer's Edict comes back as an effect. But for right now, I'm just going to put this guy really ahead of the race. Come on over for a lot. Too bad this guy can't do anything. Maybe should have done a little differently. I don't know. 
Yeah, the bow's really cool. No, this is the one I was playing, uh, or you were watching the other day, my white infect list. As it becomes an 8-8. And I wish I could make it protection from colorless, but that's not a thing. All right, we're not getting through this blockade. Uh, I think the next turn we're just going to uh, double equip the bow. I'm going to ping at the end of the turn. I'll ping, and then I'll equip and ping if our... Uh, Leonin stays alive. Remains of the living persuasion, as Toothmaker would probably say. Toothmaker, it's so funny how much Aaron reminds me of you when we play Paper Magic. It's I swear, if there was a Turing test, I would I couldn't tell you guys apart. There's something about the way, even the way he plays the cards and stuff. It's it's really interesting. I think all that time you stayed here when we were getting ready for the uh, Popper event. All those uh, days and evening, I think he was very, uh, he was studying you. And I'm very glad that that was his target of study, because one of my favorite people, too. All right, let's get this over with. Pow. Make up for a little punt here and equip here. Will it live? It's got protection from black. Pow. Click very slowly on that as we, I think, win. I don't know if there's anything that can... All right. Cool. Wow. That was a haul, wasn't it? Woo. It's an honor. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. It's like you're here, but you're not. So thanks to my son. I don't miss you as much. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to use the restroom, guys. Check out this Kaldheim preview of the new ability, and I'll be back in just a few. Kaldheim is without a doubt the single greatest world we have ever visited. And I am here to show you, without a doubt, the single greatest ability anyone has ever played with. It has won me dozens, nay, hundreds of battles. As you may have guessed, it's time to boast here on First Look, Kaldheim. To show off the new keyword boast, here's someone who's no stranger to boasting. Varagoth Bloodsky Sire. I mean, waded through a river of fire? That's no joke. Boast abilities are activated abilities that you can activate only if the creature with the boast ability has attacked that turn. Now this could be in the middle of that combat, either before blockers are declared, after blockers are declared, but before combat damage, or even after combat damage is dealt. You could also boast during your post-combat main phase, or even during your end step. As long as the creature attacked, sing its praises and boast away. Oh, but no more than once each turn. Nobody likes a loudmouth braggart. That said, we are awesome, and we are going to crush everything. Clogged pipes and plugged up toilets can bring a busy family to its knees. At Stinkweed, we know and understand you and your family just don't have time for that. Stinkweed, fast, professional plumbing you can count on. Call 2 in a black, D-R-E-D-G-E-5. That's 2 in a black, D-R-E-D-G-E-5. I was brought to my knees. Stinkweed drenched my pipes. One of our old favorites. One of our first ones. Remember a little fight? I gotta update that one, make it a little bit better. I see some little issues. Hey, uh... He who dared, thank you. And uh, that was a great game, boy. Almost lost that one. Thank you for not uh, sniping either. Uh, yeah, I want to play first. Dr. Horrible. We don't have any infect creatures, but we have a lot of draw. And we got protection. Believe it or not, I'm thinking of keeping this hand, but I'm not going to. We're all going to mulligan. We got three lands again. Now we got all kinds of goodies. We'll say keep. And, uh, you know, we don't know what we're up against. But I'm sure there's going to be some death. I know I was just critiquing. I You need to keep three, but I'm going to get rid of a land here. Let's see. Done. This is the first draw. We should draw into another land. I'm going to lead off with Angelic if I see a swamp or a mountain. <laughs> Stinkweed dreads my pipes. What was that? Ad nauseum artwork, I believe it is. All right. Now we gotta we got to turn up the aggro speed here. Going up against Tron. This will be a slog. We're going to have a pretty long show today, folks. So I'm cataloging um, 
my media so that I try not to repeat. So like in three more months, you're still not going to see these commercials because I've, I've never officially done that. So I'm trying to keep a little log of like, so I, you know, stuff doesn't get missed because I got like 40 commercials now. And I, I think I, I loaded up a uh, OBS streams and it said media source 162. And I was like, Oh, I'm, <laughs> thank goodness. I, <laughs> I've got a lot of media making this show. All right. Thanks a lot. Now I knew this was going to happen. See that land drop miss. Damn it. Oh, well. Yeah, what to call against Tron, right? What do you guys think is the best color to call with that benevolent blessing? Obviously, probably try to use it reactionary, but that would require we get some mana. Toothmaker, you missed the top of the show. I did take it to a tournament, and I've never crashed and burned harder. This deck's very finicky. It wasn't quite this build, but I believed in it enough to uh, put up 10 bucks and try it, and I, I, uh, it couldn't have gone worse. And there were two times I could have won, and I screwed up. I know I wasn't drinking anything. <laughs> All right. Come on. Land. Oh, yeah. Dark orange or purple. That's a good choice. Let's see him weather the storm out of this one. Yeah. How much do I overextend here? At this stage, I'm trying to deduce, um, yeah, we're still a turn away from any sort of board wipe, so I'm just going to keep invested in the board here. I've got a pretty heavy creature draw, so odds of them having some sort of a uh, wrath. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Go ahead. Gain all the life you want. <laughs> I ain't playing by your rules, fool. Woo. I am drinking the loudest soda on the planet. It's a zero calorie something or other called cucumber mint. It sounds a lot better than it is. It's one of those, after a few sips, you can tolerate it. Just what you want in a drink, right? But man, the carbonation count on this is so ridiculous. It's like I, I've had it open for two hours in the other room because it was too loud. I could hear it on the mic when I started the show. I was going to have it instead of coffee, but oh my gosh. Ah, a flavorless mojito. <laughs> man, little fight, you nailed it. That's exactly what it is. Swirl it like wine. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so I got to do the, uh, the pinky move, right? Put the pinky up and hmm. screen grab that one. All right, here we go. Yeah, you go and play Weather the Storm nine more times, sucker. Am I giddy? Yes. You're seeing me at my absolute happiest when a plan comes together like that. I feel like that guy from A Team. What was his name? Hannibal? Yes. Look at this. Everything's working. Woo. Coming in. Oh, man. Only thing better is that that just be a little enchantment. It's like, ah, eat it, Tron. Can you tell I hate this deck? I think it's coming through, right? All right, all right. Uh, I'm going to do it. Invest. Yield through the turn. I can't do nothing. Yield through the turn. To flatten it, I mean. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was... I moved it around quite a bit. I don't want to disturb the bubbles... Oh, I'm heading off. Why do I need such a long name? Heading out. Good to see you again, my friend. Hope you make it a habit of joining us. And that. Check that out. Best deck in the format goes down. A white infect. Sucker. Tron. W. Now see if we can keep that up. So, uh, Moments Peace is a thing, but we don't have anything to worry about with Life Gain, as you saw there. And it's hilarious when that works. I don't think we need Orm's Cure. I do think we need the longboat, and I do think we need macabs. But how many? And uh, we're probably not going to be killing too much stuff with the renewals, so I'm going to... I think we get rid of all of these. Oh, 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 oh. See you next time. Nice to hang out. All right. The only thing I don't like about why do I need such a long name is his long name. It's very tongue-tying. Ah, let's see. One hollow for like that kaboom uh, rolling thunder that can maybe gain us 400 life if they uh, have multiple targets. It's a very interesting card, right? I don't think so, though. I think we just keep in one angelic renewal and we go like this. So, yeah, we're going all aggro. We've got the uncounterable fairy macabre, probably one of my favorite design cards of all time. Yeah, 
Let's try this, folks. Whoop. Having a lot of fun with y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me. Good times. Take that, Tron. That's what I should call the show. Right? Just big lights. <laughs> That'll get some clicks on YouTube, right? Just, this beats Tron. And it does. But it's usually because of longbows. We've got another kind of aggro draw, which is what we want. We're going to keep this. The scary thing about Tron Game 2 in a deck like this, though, is now they got they have so much room because they don't need to gain life. It's like, oh my god, they probably have so much hate. But most of it's angled towards red and, and uh, blue. And as you can see, our hue is of a different light spectrum. Go ahead and gain your life. Sucker! Yeah, I don't want to see an early prohibit, though. That would suck. All right. Looking and feeling good. Here we go. Come on, tap out for a prism. Prism. Ah, shoot. All right, so I'm going to lead off with the Mur here because he's probably on Prohibit. I really wanted to see a prism there because that would have opened the door for the Lost Leonin. Whoop. So I'm going to slow roll this a little bit because I think this is a Prohibit. Impulse. Darn it. Ah. A flavorless Mojito with the pinky up. Yeehaw. Alrighty, alrighty. Here we go. Alright, what do we got here? Bonders Ornament? I'm trying to call all these cards here. Compulsive Research. Hmm, that's also hard because Tron can just do everything better, faster, more flexible, everything. Um, you never know what it's up against. So you bring in like a hollow and then they're playing a Dinrova horror lock and they have no rolling thunder. Or so I mean, it's just that problems go on and on and on. They just need to ban one of those lands. Damn it. Anyway, I'm going to go like this. And I'm just going to get maximum carnage here. Ends up working out OK so far. Got them on a pretty quick clock here. They're playing something clunky like Tangle. We can uh, still survive. That's always fun. Vigilance and First Strike and Infect is really, really nasty. First Strike more so because of the way Wither Damage works. A lot of times, like, I had a game where I blocked... Uh, was it? Yeah, I had a... Th now, do the math here. 3-3, three, three, First Striking... Uh, oh, shoot. Well, that sucks. 3-3, three, three, First Striking Infect, dude. 4-4 four, four attacks into it. You know what happens. It becomes a 1-1, one, one, does 1, and dies. Well, that sucked. Aha! I'd rather play the creature. Boy, I hope we get that Lost Leonin back. Um. Yeah, I think we'll wait on the Angelic Renewal. I want to make sure I get a creature next turn. That way I can... Uh, if he is on a prohibit, I can maybe bait him if depending on what we draw. Okay, well we won't need to do that now. That's fine. Of course, it gives us the less heavy hitter. All right. Well, he does still have two open. Um, I'll play in those hands here. I got to stay aggro. Is this a prohibit? Toothmaker. I'm just starting to get interested in Popper, and I'd love to see a monthly metagame review video from you. Quick and dirty, f five to ten minutes. That's interesting. Yeah, it's just there's so many articles that do that. I think Alex Olman does a really good job on on that and the the tournament stuff. And I I um the way I roll with videos, you know me, it's gonna take me a lot of time because I'm gonna make it really stand out. But I got I got enough content on this end. But yeah, if you want to, um, I think it's nerdtothecore.com. He does a pretty good weekly review of the meta game and and all that stuff and and problem with the format, recommendations, things like that. All right, here we go. Let's see what he's grabbing. Um, game log. He's targeting impulse. No, you don't. We're going to get rid of uh, 
Impulse and uh, Fiery Cannonade. Whoop. No soup for you. Your wall comes up with nothing. <laughs> I hate reading. Yeah, I guess the long end, the short of it, it, it's just not worth the um, my my insight. For what it's worth, isn't as much as it used to be. Just because I, I uh, hold on a minute here. I gotta think. Let me do this to here. I'll get rid of this and uh, this. I don't want to. You know, I might want to bring that back with the uh, <laughs> use the fan graph on the macabre. But if I was playing tournaments all the time and stuff, and I wasn't doing propaganda, I'd be fine doing that. It's just like I said, when you see like my productions and things like that, some of those things take weeks. Because he's old, <laughs> I'm feeling snarky today. <laughs> if I had a couple of me, I would definitely uh, try that. All right. Well, we're gonna go. Uh, this will go like this. Then we attack. See if you got prismatic strands for that. He's going to take it. Wow. Or not. Oh, moment's peace time. Ah, dang it. Yep. All right. I need that longbow. All right. Let's go. God, already at 16 minutes. Frustrating. Ye old. Ye old. Maybe you can sneak through a uh, solid footing play. Just too proud of, just too proud of high production value to do anything quick and dirty. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Can't tell you how many times if you had a fine tooth comb, you look at something I've I've completed and it's different when I air it on the show than it is the first time I uploaded it because I'll see little little screw ups or video flashes or stuff that I'm just nobody else sees or something's one frame off and I'm like thanks a lot fairy macabre nice of you to show up <laughs> I'm still going to do it that's how I roll I attack in the fog yeah easier to write than produce it very And you know what? That's what's kind of what we're known for. I don't want to change the MO and, and flip the script on anybody and they show up and there's just some cannon fodder video that just looks really quickly thrown together. I couldn't sleep at night and hopefully everybody would hold me to it. That's why I didn't like last week's show because that damn camera was out of focus and I I just can't... Uh, I really wish I could have that one back. I know Toothmaker liked it, but I think you're alone in that. All right, let's do this. I got the goods. I got the goods. Let's uh, let's let's get some protection spells going here, man. Let me get a benevolent blessing. Call him blue. That'll stop the of a horror from even working. But he'll just target the thing, and then we're screwed. Oh, Paladin nineteen with the uh, yeah. If you give him a nice plug, uh, Alexander Weber, the Brazilian who does it all in Portuguese. So. If you've got access to that, good times. What do we got here? Another one? Yep, of course. It's Tron. They draw 90 cards a turn, produce 52 mana on Tuesdays, and uh, also do just about everything else. Maybe they'll accidentally block. Maybe maybe wizards, like the new the new card set that we were just showing off, they'll, they'll come up with like, Urza's unfair palace. <laughs> It'll say when it it starts in your opening hand and it counts as every Urza land. Oh, and it gains five. And the color of your choice. Why not? I've been debating doing a podcast video monthly. I don't want a solid co-host. I have to take my time. Oh, yeah, very true. Yeah, if you want my angle, too. I, I know I was just critiquing podcasts earlier, especially, uh, you know, of the popper persuasion because... It just turns into a reading the card show. If you can find a formula that doesn't do that, I mean, at some point it's a little necessary. You've got to let your readers know what you're talking about. But And the other thing I don't like about a lot of uh, MTG podcasts is um, all, it, all they do is just read deck lists. And it's like, okay, huh? come on, we need that longbow. No use in spoiling the... Uh, the moment's piece now. Uh, and these abilities stack up. 
All right. And we take two. We can not attack this turn. Come on, Longbow. Help us out. I'm going to hold on to that plane in case they are running the Dinrova Horror. And we'll at least have something to do. One thing I don't like about having Macabre in my hand is I can't yield the turn. Got to be Johnny on the spot. Deal four damage to any meal. How many of you in the chat even know what a flame tongue cavu is? I think sometimes that's one of my favorite commercials, but um, I think it shows our age too. That was Invasion Block. That was back when I used to play in person with Toothmaker. All right, there we go. I'll do this, and we know what we're going to grab. Let's make sure we've got the uh, game log. Uh, he's going after. Of course, he's going after that. So we'll take out um, Flicker and uh, Moments Peace. Raise his hand. Mm -hmm. And I have gone on record many a time saying, I think that card could be made pauper legal, and it wouldn't see play. Maybe Tron would use it and abuse it. As powerful as it is. On ESPN, they have those sports shows that list the topics on the side, and then they talk about them in order. Oh, yeah. I mean, think about it. I, obviously, everybody's going to have that knee-jerk reaction of red deck wins. It's like, yeah, you could put it in there, but four mana... I can't attack still. That's fine. I don't know if I overinvest here. Uh, I'm going to do it. Well, let's see. How many uh, moments pieces are we down to? They probably have two more. They're half, more than halfway through their deck. Yeah, they definitely have another piece in hand. I really need that longbow to show up. Yeah, see what I mean? It, it, you know, at first people go, what? That's way too powerful. And then you start thinking about it, and you're like, yeah, you know, Popper's too powerful for it. That's how good the format is. That's what my son, you know, he was, he fell into the trap of standard for a bit, and then he's he hates standard now. Standard spelt with whatever the dollar symbol is. I know we have a spoof that, that does that. There's a good reason. He's like, I'm tired of, even on Arena, you know, of playing decks for two weeks, and then everything's gone, and drops and plummets in value and you have to buy everything again so he's getting into the uh, historic format i think or or what's there's another one on arena and then he loves popper because he's just like wow these cards never go away oh yeah the gruel cascade flame tongue cavu that's a good call popper 10 that could probably play all right here comes the big boom so he is playing rolling thunder and we are going to lose uh there it is and boom we're dead Hmm. And the good news when you're not playing red or blue is that Hydro Blast, Red Elemental Blast, Blue Elemental Blast, there's, you know, 16 cards you don't have to worry about them bringing in against you. So things like Hollow demand a very hardcore counterspell. Do we just bring in COP Red? I think that might be a better call. Get rid of the Renewal. And, uh... However, we did see, uh, you know, I think Hollow's the better call because we saw uh, Fiery Cannonade, and in that scenario, it would have gained us like eight life, I think. Maybe six. No, although respect to DR, horrible reference. Huh? All right, one Hollow in. I'm not going to overdo it. Could go COP Red, but uh, like I said, I want to be able to lean a little aggro, maybe... Uh, you know, have a little surprise value that eats a counter spell if anything. It doesn't cost me my team. Wipe me out. I think this is how I go with this. Let's go. Deal full damage to any meal. <laughs> That's exactly how it's pronounced. Imagine if I wrote it that way in the script. I think there was some uh, bottle bottle gnome bourbon in, in that VO read, wasn't there, a little fight? A lot of your best ones, I know, uh, are uh, aided by the elixir. All right, well, we got it. I got a pretty nice little aggro hand here. We've seen red as the removal base and blue for the thing we want to prevent, but we're going to keep this. I've seen better. 
I can make a little bit of a last stand. We're going first, so uh, I mean, it'd be nice to have a bodyguard here, but right now I think this is our, our best play. Yeah, I got to loosen up the vocals. All right, let's bring this out and hope it survives. If he's got just a zap answer for this, of course, what would it, he'd need like a hornet sting or a gut shot, but come on. Oh, I was really hoping he was going to play a, uh, a prism there. Now, the good thing about this over traditional infect is uh, there's quite a few things, really. One of the best parts is that we invest, right? And then we don't blow everything. It's not all in the graveyard. It's still stacked up on a creature. So I believe I want to go with this first. And then I'll... Um, I think I got to hang off uh, just in case they've got... What could they have? I don't know. They might have a cast down ability. That's the problem. Tron just has access to everything. Do I play it really? I'm just going to I'm just going to go in here for 3. I'm going to call uh hmm red on the blessing probably. Oh, yeah, the Thought Lace decks. Very cool, Popper Tim. I've thought about doing that so many times. I forget what cards do that, too. Um, all right, so here we go. He's got that. We've got this. I'll throw this on red in response. Boop. Absolutely love when somebody doesn't play much white in their deck. That's when this deck really shines. Spell Slam's in the house. All right, howdy back at you, sir. Woo! We're one and one with Tron. And he has a great name for a Tron player. Dr. Horrible. That should be the name of Tron. It's going pretty good. We have uh, we beat Rakdos and uh, White Weenie. And, uh, or did we? I forget. Uh, no, we lost to White Weenie. Real close to their game. And then uh, we beat Zuberas. And now we're off to Tronville. All right. Oh, Squeemeister. Oh, nice to hear. It's a new, it's a new snow-covered member of the chat, Squeemeister. Very neat. All right, here we go. We might have the win here, folks. I believe we're going to beat Tron. Yep, here we go. And uh, for good measure, we'll put this on here. We'll do this. And call blue. Boop. And attack for the win. Taking down the best deck in Popper with my janktastic idea. White infect. As we go into the last round, folks. So we're uh, three and one. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. How's that for legitimacy, sucker? That's the whole reason you want to play this list. Love to see Tron go down. Yes! You should get a token of some kind. If we had some sort of a popper payment or something like that. <laughs> get wrecked! <laughs> Deluxe. How much better is the deck with Benevolent Blessing? A lot. So much so, I risked it in a league. And if you want uh, the tragic lessons of Deluxe to uh, go, come full circle, just rewind the tape and uh, watch that. I don't want to bore anybody that's been here for the whole show. But it was uh, it was depressing to say the least. Um, but normally it does it does pretty damn good. Cliff notes, I lost all, and uh, I had uh, plenty of games where I, well, there were three games, so I technically might have been able to go 3-2, but I punted just left and right, and I didn't even have uh, Bottle Gnome Bourbon to uh, to blame. I was very motivated, and it just didn't, all the matchups were just perfectly wrong, and, and like, you know, kill all stuff you don't see very much, none of the metagame showed up, it was just, it was a tragic lesson. <laughs> Oh, look at all this new tech in the chat. I love it, guys. Keep it up. All right. Here we go. All right. Well, we've got solid footing and the blessing. We like this hand, unless this is just like some kill-it-all deck. But, hey, we got the blessing behind it. Icar Cloud feels a little underwhelming sometimes. But we'll keep it. Now, this is the kind of hand that you've got to really consider 
not cycling. I'm going to just play this. I'm telling you, 23 lands feels like 16 in this. We cycle them. Our hunted Fengraft goes and gets them. This is good times. Looks like elves. You know what I like about today's show? We have such variety. Rakdos, White Weenies, Uberas, Tron, and now elves. As much as I like to bitch about Tron and how the format needs to uh, get fixed, there is a lot of variety. Good times, good times. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's bring out the goods. And hopefully they don't have main deck gut shot. I think we just almost win next turn, depending on what we draw. This can get really lopsided results if your opponents happen to be monochromatic. <laughs> oh! What is this? I don't want elves in an infect list? Never mind. We got ourselves a game, but we're going to have vigilance and protection. In fact, mirror. <laughs> There's very, very little that can mirror this. But yes, how trippy is that? Uh, I don't. That's interesting tech. I guess you get away from edicts. Uh, a little bit of ramp there. Definitely some uh, reversals. All right. I don't know what I'm staring at so much. We're just going to call uh, green. All right. Boop. I could do that as a surprise, but he's not going to block. Say green. And oh we don't we don't have a vigilance though, so that kinda sucks. Thought we were gonna have vigilance. Hmm. Hmm. Problem here. Well, there's no problem. I'm just gonna wait. I think we'll just we'll we'll win next turn. For right now. Even if he if he pumps up and tries to get over the top of this, we still live and his, his stuff will die. They might uh, not know. I doubt it. They're an effect player, but they might not remember the wither damage. It's a very common mistake. It happens all the time. Did y'all hear that poison counters are back in Kaldheim? Not for Popper, though. Ooh, that's good news. I did not hear that. Yeah. They're probably just going to give uh, Tron some uh, land that comes down and uh, gives your opponent nine poison counters as long as it's the first turn. All right, well, we win that one. I saw the writing on the wall there. This is uh, brutal. Even though this isn't the most efficient way to roll, it does uh, amp up the armor, which we already had. And I think that was going to be like a 12-12 or something like that. Okay, so we really like uh, gut shots in this matchup. Nice little surprise value card. Longbow is going to be way too slow. The cure, I guess we could prevent damage to ourselves, but I don't really want to see it. Do -do -do. I think we're good here. It's a spicy sideboard. Yes, uh, while we're here, we got Arms Cure, three Macabs, a COP Red, a COP Black, two Hollows, the ever flexible Light of Hope, for life, destroy an enchantment, or put a plus one one counter on something, and then uh, two Verdon Longbows, which uh, were key in beating the Zubera deck, and many others. I wish it came up against Tron. That would have been just a nice little. Because now that Tron player is going back, what was he, Dr. Horrible? And he's thinking, oh, I was, because his deck lost. It was, you know, we, we were there to capitalize on it. But it's nice when you beat Tron and they have everything. And your tech wins out. We got protection. Yeah, we'll keep this. It's not the sexiest of hands, but. We've got at least a little main deck answer here, which we will take advantage of immediately. I don't like waiting around on Infect for a little two-for-one tricks. If he's got a Mutagenic, that's fine, but I want it to happen now when he can't attack. All right, there it is. <laughs> Grassoff, I think you're saying the other... with my uh, MTG Clairvoyance with Popper. There's a good example of it. All right. Well, here we go. And given the circumstances, I will block this all day long, especially because we drew the other, we drew the blessing. His uh, modus operandi here is going to be uh, Vines of Vastwood on our dude to keep him in the game. Now, we've already seen one mutagenic down. I will block here. Don't tempt me. 
Don't do it. Set him back a turn, or is there another mutagenic? All right, cool. That's what you don't want your opponent to do, so I will do it, because I play Infect a lot. All right. So now that we drew the third land, I will cycle this. Bloop. Cool. All righty. You. Yeah, now with Vigilance, this is going to be a very uphill battle for our opponent here. Okay. Hmm. This is interesting. Four cards are already at two infect. Hmm. I want to be able to max out my mana next turn. I actually think I'm going to drop the... Uh Have you been keeping up on the Kelheim spoilers? Today? Yeah, we covered it at the top of the show, at least for what it was an hour or two ago. What is this? Gosh, two and a half hours ago. My God, it's been a long stream. This is the last one, though, but thanks for joining me, everybody. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the direct line here is. Um, I'm, I'm going to go for, like, the Uber win here. And just uh, drop the priest. <laughs> drop the priest. Because next turn, if if we survive here, we just win. Because we'll have a protection from green, vigilant, first striking, just monstrosity. Yes, I like that play. That means more life. And he might not attack because he's already shown how... Uh... Hey, all right. Dang it. I was kind of hoping you guys could see that. A blessing on the priest. So that's cool. We took down like a traditional infect minus the Alanoar uh, elf and such. But... um. Anyway, um, have you seen Code Spell Cleric? I have not. Uh, if we still had that up, I would I would bring it up. But I'll go over the deck list here real quick. And everybody joining us a little later in the show, which is fine. Thanks for joining us either way. Uh, so this is White Infect. We went 4-1 today. And uh, I sure wish that happened in the league. It has happened. I did a 5-0 a long time ago. But it had equipment. You can build. Uh, there's an enchant. Uh, I made a version with uh, Tethmos High Priest. I think two of them main, one on the side. But you got to go all in with like weird cards, like the uh, target creature gets two two flying as long as you played this on your main phase, and all these you know combat tricks because you got to go sorcery and instant base there. This is all you know quality, 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 and I I, I think this is the way to roll with it. Uh, but we've got twenty three lands. Whatever you do, don't change that. Um, these go away, and these go away. So after that, you're looking at a lot less. It feels like 16, and we saw a few uh, examples of screw happening there, too. Um, four bodyguards, four armors, three sentinel's eyes, four solid footing, one longbow main. Saw how crucial that is, especially against Tron, if you get that fog lock. You'll be able to prevent it. And keep in mind, one of the best things about this deck is what we saw. There's so much vigil vigilance going on in this deck that uh, the longbow hits for two a turn with infect often. We've got the Mur, uh, two surprise Orum's Cure, which says uh, if you control a plane, it's free. You just tap it, but play it very slowly and prevent the next four damage that will be dealt to anything. Any target? Wait. Yeah, any target. Yeah, target your big toe. We got uh, four Lost Leonin. Four Benevolent Blessings, three Angelic Renewals, which is so cool with this because you pitch this, you get it back, you get two bodyguards, you get two effects and stuff. And our heavy hitter, this, with this is usually a good game. Um, it's similar to uh, original Infect when you had Invigorate opening hands when that was uh, before that was banned. You just won those games. And so usually when you see solid footing and your mana's right and you got a priest, odds are you've got protect your protection suite somewhere, right? Um, and you can go from there. All right, two hollows on the sideboard, three or two light of hopes. We got a, a COP black. Like I said at the top of the show, this is mostly because of um, black can kind of uh, keep you at bay and drag out the game. And if you got an angler looking you down or anything like that, and who likes to lose to chittering rats, right? Uh, we're throwing a COP red for good measure because uh, mostly for Tron and burn. Uh, we didn't want it against even uh, Rolling Thunder, so we saw we had Hollow in our hand that game, so that would have been really funny to pull off live. Two Arms Gear, three uh, Macabs, uh, three Gut Shots, and the last Long Bow. That's why I'm not going four Macabs in this build, because we have access to a second Long Bow there. So anyway, guys, uh, we are going to head out, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place, here on Propaganda Saturdays, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much for joining me. Going to go out with a few things here. 
If uh, you didn't catch it, go check out our YouTube channel playlist for our MTG spoofs. We've got a new one called uh, Bottle Nose Bourbon. And until then, we'll see it. You know what? I'm just going to roll to it again, guys. We'll roll to that one and a few others, and we'll see you this time next week. Thanks for joining me, guys. Adios. We've handmade our signature bottle known bourbon for over five centuries. We use three different types of grains, crop rotated corn, rye with infused relics, and malted barley from Ginju fields. Only the finest radiant fountain water is used, which contains limestone that contributes to a better tasting bourbon. Hoping to add nutrients like mage mark magnesium and calcium that our newly sprout swarm yeast needs to thrive. Next, we mill our grains every upkeep and cook them using the fiery breath of kiln fiends. From there, we vapor snag mutagenic samples till we get the alcohol content exactly right. Finally, our bourbon is aged in new, fire forged and patented in truthful oak barrels, a distinction we take pride in. As seasonal rituals change, temperatures rise and fall, and our bourbon interacts with the woodland spirits. The color and the flavor of the now fully mature bourbon comes from the caramelized sprite sugars and the charred oak until it is ready to be untapped and bottled. Bottle known bourbon. A magically reinforced blend of the finest quality. Available at all Singer Superstores.